dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, we'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, a bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. in the sea and dead men in the sand old salt marsh sleeps while its enemies plan best batten down your hatches there's a storm near at hand oh, we should have stayed on land oh we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song cause it's the end and here we are okay it's been about a month and a half, I think, since we have been in this particular campaign. We had a bit of a flashback. We've had some one shots. Thank you, by the way, I should say thank you to both David and Elena. Those were really fun. I got to play in one of them, got to uh, work on the other one a bit in post. Um, that seemed great. Um, got some good memories for that. So thank you for doing that. Um, but anyway, back to our regular Missed Opportunities plot line. Let's We're having an issue, apparently. Everyone uh -oh. except for Jade is frozen. Jade was frozen on my screen, so I think yeah. it was an issue on his end. It's, can you hear me, yeah? Yep. Yeah, I just had to think on what was saying. Your internet is unstable, but bizarre. Uh, did, did I was frozen back. All right. on the worst possible again. face. Start again. <laughs> I'm going to do it right this time. The party is presently in the realm of Dementlier. In this land, illusion masks reality, and the pretense of wealth is the pinnacle of being. All are glad to let the past die forgotten, lest the glamour of their past sins be deemed an unfashionable virtue in today's society. So ruling over this strange land is Duchess Cedra Donaire, always masked, erudite and aloof. She holds lavish balls for the, wit the wealthiest in Dementlia. Those deemed upstarts or pretenders, having found to be lying in her midst, meet a cruel fate. Only a few days prior, in fact, the party saw her point a finger towards a woman in a frayed dress who had the nerve to be dancing in her ballroom and offered her words of condemnation. Before their eyes, the woman crumbled to dust, only to be swept up in little dust pans soon after by an entourage of ghoulish footmen. The party later met a political prisoner, Dominic Donaire, claiming to be the true heir to the Donaire title. They rescued this man and he took them far into the countryside to a decrepit house built around the last standing tower of a long collapsed fortress. Inside, he said, lies the truth. Inside lies the hidden past and the memories that would undo Cedra and give them the needed power to defeat the evil Crimson Duchess. So you went inside and were soon made aware of three spirits which you could communicate with via a well spirit board um you met learned of a woman in knightly armor a burly man with an axe and a woman in an um 
sort of like a housekeeper's apron. Now, I believe, and so the um, three spirits, you communicated a bit with each of them. Um, most recently, the woman in knightly armor told you to evict the chimney witch. The burly man with the axe told you of the location of, well, an axe or an item to help you. And sure enough, Prion found that weapon buried beneath the front porch. And do you remember by chance what the woman in the apron told you? I believe she offered. Don't words know that of we protection. actually spoke to her. D didn't. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. I ha had a blank, and I was trying to remember. Yes, she has not yet. Was been that a contacted. test? <laughs> Could we have told that you, was, and you would right. have just agreed? She said. Uh, she told us that we get a million gold pieces each. <laughs> My own note was confusing, so there we go. <laughs> Um, so yeah, this is kind of catching us up here. Are there any, um, initial questions about anything? Um, Am I on the ship? Purely out of character, that's fine. Yes, you are. I'm not hearing anything again. I've, I've lost sound, yeah. Hello? Mm, apologies, chat. Uh -uh. Could you guys hear me? So I can't hear you. So why is that? Hang on. It's not my internet. It's actually Zoom, I believe. I'm going to close Zoom and reopen it. Uh, uh, apologies for the technical difficulties, guys. Right, can I hear people now? Five, Hello. six, seven, eight. I've just te tested five, my internet. Six, seven, eight, my internet says it's good. I think it might be Zoom. All right, well, seems to be working now. Can you hear me? Okay, good. Yes. It just wasn't lighting up. Yeah. One second. <clears throat> just got to get the other Can cam. you hear me? <laughs> Those dulcet tones. <laughs> Can you hear me? Can you hear Everyone me? Everyone just started pointing at their ears and I got confused. Yeah, it's because you cut out mid sentence. <laughs> yeah, we were all confused. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think I got that pulled back up. New so it's Year. supposed to be illuminating, and instead I'm more confused than I was before. <laughs> new Year, new us. New Year, new us. John, John you're actually muted. Are the you worst being... recap after. After? It's really bizarre, I don't know. Ever. I need to check. Uh, uh, carry on, Pete. I'm going to fix cameras while we, while we start. Okay. Um, I don't know where I stopped. I don't know what. <laughs> it was, yeah. Okay, so we had. Asked I just heard Sean question. say worst recap ever. I don't think he was talking uh, about me. You but... cut off. You cut off mid sentence explaining where I was when. Yes, because you, you asked out. if you were on the ship. I asked if I was still on the ship because oh. I had missed the previous session before the one shot. No, no, no. You, you're you're with the group. Okay, cool. Privy to all the knowledge that they have. Where were we? I think we actually did reference once or twice that you were there. You were just being just hanging out in the character. background yeah, and taking out. notes yeah. or something <laughs> we we finished off i think right after i mean literally right after nether got another session with the spirit board and this time it was yes. the it was the it was the serving girl 
who told yeah. us to eliminate the chimney witch. I thought it was the armor lady. It was the armor lady? Yeah. Yes. All right. armor, armor lady. lady. Evict the chimney witch. Yeah. Chimney witch. Not ominous at all. So the question so is... So you get the sense that uh, with this spirit board, now that you've done two of these sort of seances... There's more to say from the spirits too, but you get the sense that you're going to have to explore a bit and leave and come back as they gather the energy to assert themselves in this way again. So, right. Well, if there's a witch in the chimney, is it going to be on this level? The levels above us or the levels below <coughs> us? Peter, am I hallucinating the image, the mental image of an arm coming out of the fireplace? No, that happened. Did, did that? Okay, that happened. Right? Yeah, okay. it was an arm that looked like it was sort of reaching down with a wrist and then you saw an elbow and then another elbow and then another elbow, like a many elbowed arm many elbows i remember many elbows yeah that, yep. and it placed that, a okay. little uh baked good on the uh hearth which my summon chink. which my summon beaver it. my summon beaver actually just <laughs> ate so yes that. right well no normally the we... easiest way into a um into a chimney is either through the, the fireplace or the roof Melvin, you're small, why don't you go? I'm not sure that my first instinct to go up against a, win a witch is to punt a, a wizard up a chimney at her. Uh, and in the other room, something actually came out of the chimney and, uh, and damaged us, damaged one of us. I think we should just explore a bit more. Fair enough. You think maybe it's gonna be one of those that like has multiple entrances, like, like there's if there's a fireplace here on this level, there maybe there's a fireplace in the same place on the second level, kind of thing. Well, there are maybe. probably multiple fireplaces, but they they might connect only one or two chimneys. And I fully expect that somewhere on the top floor we're going to find a room where two children have starved to death, having been locked in there for weeks and weeks without. Mm. <laughs> that seems insanely unlikely. It never happens. Wow, that's, right? that was yeah. really specific. <laughs> It's something I read in a book once. Wait, I can't read. Never mind. Was it green? <laughs> <laughs> yes! Oh, well done. Oh, wow, good call back. There. <laughs> oh, got I him. I read a book once. It was green. <laughs> uh, well, we, anyway. we could also try lighting a fire in the fireplace to, to smoke it out. Oh, Let's yeah. make sure we identify all of the places where it could be smoked out to before we try any smoking. Oh. Okay, no, that makes sense. I mean, it's, she it's might fair. just I don't, I don't be really waiting in a room many... upstairs, so we, sh we should really look around a bit more, I think. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. We don't really... I, I have no idea how many fireplaces there are. I know there's at least one that we're looking at. Well, haven't you been paying attention? We've been going around looking in a bunch I've, of these I've been rooms. busy taking notes on things but like But you didn't the, bother the, to take notes on how many, and how, how many the, fireplaces there the were. The number of tiles that there are on the floor here and the, the, the number of tears in the wallpaper over there. You've got how to many learn tiles to are there? Um, 342 on this floor so far. Oh my god, has he actually counted? <sighs> Drink. <laughs> Where to next? But if only I could bring up a mental picture of the layout of this place. Most map like it's really, map. really, really like hard. Map -like uh, oh, I'm sitting here staring been, at it. I've been taking a map as we go. Um, it's one of describe it to me. <laughs> well, um, so we're, we're, we're currently we're in, in, in this room it. here. Um, and then there's a hallway outside, and there's a stairwell just uh, south of us. Um, and lo what looks like a porch, according to my notes, uh, that goes around the outside of the house, maybe? It's like I could see it in front of me. Thank you, Melvin. <laughs> so out of character, um, when Sean's uh, familiar ate the, the cupcake, it was sent back, right, to the, the other realm or plane no. of existence? Gadrazel is still there. Still here? Oh, yep. good. 
That was just from, you know, theater of the mind where it is. That's a good cupcake. Mm -hmm. He says that I'm kind of frosting. He doesn't mind the uh, crunchy bit in the middle, I think, that the, we the talked what? about. So. The what? Something... <laughs> <laughs> the was what? Uh, the crunchy bit. Um, like a bone? Uh, I don't no. remember us talking about that, Peter. <laughs> They're the worst pies in London. <laughs> Gardrazel hadn't shared that with us. <laughs> Gadrasso <laughs> looks around, and doesn't say, <laughs> just sort of eats the rest of it. <laughs> what he eats bones? I'm very uh, sharp teeth. Like a like a normal beaver does, yeah. Yeah, they go through wood all the time. Wood bone, fish. Same thing. All right, so we go north. But there's no stair. We have not yet to encounter anything going down, right? No, only up. No. I think. We should check out we're going north in the right and the rest of this floor, and then perhaps upstairs. Yeah. Up, up. Lord forbid we ever not fully explore one floor before yes. sending to another one. <laughs> no this one strategy. <laughs> it, it, it looks like there's a door over here as and well. And also right next to you, I think, behind you. Mm-hmm. Oh, What's goodness, that? yes. Oh, I will open that one first. Then. Oh, okay. Oh, this one? Oh, okay. You find a um, wonderful surprise behind this one, uh, which is a hallway with more doors. Uh, one does not simply walk into more doors. <laughs> it's very true in the sense of many D&D parties. <laughs> and so you have, well, a few options from here. Room to the south. A room. I'll to... go to the south first. Opening here, <coughs> you see a gallery. There are moody landscapes and dour busts atop marble pedestals here, collecting dust. Um, in an alcove. To the east stands a larger-than-life onyx statue of an athlete wrestling a monst wrestling monstrous disem. I can hear fine. I can hear. Not yeah. everyone can. I can Sorry. hear. I can hear fine. Do do do. Uh oh. Should we keep it going and just I, see I what happens? I can hear. I can hear Peter, Sean. Who else? I can hear. People. I can. I can hear Chelsea. I can hear again. I can hear Liz. We're back. Liz, all right. Back. Okay. Yeah, it's bizarre. Weird. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. Us about the busts. The busts. <laughs> well, I will <laughs> say the uh, there are. I'll do, so yes, busts and paintings in this gallery. Uh, in an alcove to the east stands a larger-than-life onyx statue of an athlete wrestling monstrous disembodied tentacles. To the west, a wall made of black stone curves into this room, an arch opening into a darkened space beyond. Hmm. Sounds ominous. Um, really Therian is fully gonna go look at that statue. She wants to know what's up. She's impressed by the feat of strength being presented in it. <laughs> she wants to know all about this warrior. Yeah. Um, it is just a uh, um, just a very strong muscled human uh, man um, wearing um, mostly just, uh, I'm trying to think of what they're called. Um, <laughs> basically just Pants. like, like shorts, uh, Lows. basically like sailors shorts, like they would be wearing in leisure, Jams. um, to show off as Capris. much of the body Capris. as possible. Shorts. It reminds, 
a reference would be like a Greek sculpture. It's not completely new, a loin but cloth. the focus is very much on the body and the musculature, a la a um, fig leaf. Michelangelo kind of. Uh, <laughs> there it is. Style. He Man shorts. Wow, he's yeah, not wearing kind a lot of, of like clothes. That. And it's it's amazing because the the tentacles cut off where they would go off to join the larger part of the body. And so there are points where one is just barely touching his wrist and then kind of goes up and off. So the focus is the body. The body is the of the human is the part that has the base and the tentacles kind of wrap around and go off and you left only to imagine where they would connect to some sort of larger beast. Does it uh, look like this statue used to be part of a larger piece of art that was then kind of hewn from its original like larger piece or is it how are they floating <laughs> well, they're not it's, floating so they are, they're always attached I was like they're, are they <laughs> okay think there's anything magical about it you look at the end of the tentacles and the <laughs> and they actually cease to be intricately carved and turn into more unworked onyx at the ends of them. Hmm. Uh, not really an unfinished feature, but just an artistic choice to let them sort of transition back into raw stone at the edges of the uh, at the edges of the sculpture itself. As someone who uh, appreciates the finer things in life, Sarayan is definitely enchanted by this and is um, gonna spend quite some time looking at it. You guys see Sarayan some... just staring at this muscled statue wrestling tentacles. Are you touching the six pack? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> As someone who gives zero Drawing shits about the male form, I walk right past her and peer into the archway. Um. <clears throat> There is an empty, this is actually just an empty alcove. So the archway um, seems to be made of older, darker stone that arches around and then it goes in about two feet and then is just bricked off. Can Elven. poke at it a little? Uh, yeah, you touch it. Uh, make an investigation check. Sounds like you're investigating. I I may well be. Let's see here. 22. Oh, yeah. Good start, good start. Um, pushing at it, it's very, very cold stone. Um, roughly hewn. Doesn't match really the architecture of most of the rest of the home, but does match the uh, stone that you saw in the tower outside. Um, there is <sighs> so whatever constructed this too though did matched the stones almost perfectly as you sort of hold your hand to some of the crevices in the rock. You don't feel any sort of air passing between them. Um, you don't see any obvious mortar, just uh, stones set perfectly together and chilling to the touch. What the purpose might have been of this alcove is uh, unclear. This gives me the heebie-jeebies, but I don't think we're going to get in this way. Maybe there's an alternative. Something, something. Is there a cask of Amontillado around? <laughs> I mean, I could probably sniff out the alcohol within about 50 feet, so unless, uh, you know, I'm not, I don't sense any in the area. There are no holes or cracks or anything like that in this wall at all? No loose bricks, nothing? Not that she found. Um, it's for what looked like a crumbling exterior outside. This seems particularly well uh, constructed. As if someone had purposefully bricked off an extra section of the house. <clears throat> um, perhaps. 
And yes, Inaris, you can still smell gold. What do you think? Is it worth breaking through into this? We're supposed to be looking for secrets. Isn't there a... It, there's a door up in the hallway past you. Uh, Hi. Maybe there's an alternative way around. I'll try the one that's by me and Nether. Hmm. But I'll make Check sure. Check that before we try to bash anything. Before we leave this room, uh, Nether goes over to the statue and says to Sirian, you said it's made of onyx. Uh, yeah. It, uh, <clears throat> Sirian hastily draws her fin away from the well-formed body of the man. It's like <clears throat> blushing a deep shade of coral. Are um, you familiar with the stone? N- not, not terribly. Uh, what do you know about Onyx? I can't explain how I know it, but I think it can be used for powerful magic. Elvin! Uh, uh, yes? Look at this statue! Uh, it, it's kind of hard not to look at it. It takes up, like, half the room. Uh... Nether, uh, I'm sorry, Deb, Debris, De- Debris. De- Debris, yeah. Debris says that um, uh, the the stone has to do with magic. It's onyx. Um. Well, I, 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 possibly. Uh, DM, would a uh, Arcana check be appropriate for determining the magical properties and uses of onyx? Uh, that would certainly be an Arcana check, yes. Great. On the Kraken die, I've rolled a nine, so it's a total of nineteen. Nineteen? Um, yeah, um, uh, Onyx can be used in, as a focus to certain powerful spells. Um, you would know that occasionally um, wizards' focuses are made out of them, and to, so, excuse me, certain particular spells require onyx mm. as a focus. Um, specifically, uh, you know that potentially one relating to the creation of undead. Um, yeah, the onyx can definitely be used for some. As a, as a material component for certain spells, um, most of them deal with necromancy, so I'm I'm not particularly well versed in that. That's not really my my specialty or anything. Thank you very much, Neth. Neth. I mean, Deborah. I'm so sorry. I'm... It's all right. <clears throat> so, so is that what you, that's what you've heard about Onyx too? That it's it's caused or used I... to create undead? It's the strangest thing. I don't understand how I happen to know that, but yeah. I think that's what I was thinking about. Well, I mean, Melvin did just say it. I wonder... Do you want to create undead? Well... Don't put Gadgers all out of a job. Uh, right, I suppose not, then. I mean, there, there, there are a bunch of tentacles that we could break off of this if we really wanted some onyx, I suppose. They're not really finished over on the end. You never know. Especially in this amount. Surely be useful for something. Do you have a spell that could break this, or should I just try to hit it with waves? Just chuck one of the busts at it. Saran looks around the room and finds the ugliest bust and proceeds to lob it at a tentacle. Chuck a bust. <laughs> All right. Eat that Mima. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Saran, make a uh, improvised weapon attack. Okay. Are you oh, walking over and smashing it, or are you gonna are you gonna shot? Oh no! Put it? it is I a guess... full shot put. She did a lot of that I under smell the a sea. curse coming. <laughs> she was a uh, captain of the underwater shop at team at her preparatory school. Nether does right. step back. 
Oof. Yeah. <laughs> I rolled a two. Oh boy. Nice. <laughs> so you uh, uh, get it all set and just <laughs> eat this. We're in a sort very competitive team. <laughs> marble old man head at the statue, um, and it just strikes it square in the. Uh, abs, the precious abs you can't <laughs> quit staring at, and like you would only imagine after having slightly fondled them, it just poof, bounces off the abs and then falls to the ground. Um, he really the way has it, abs of the head steel. is remarkably undamaged, and you hear this sound, and you swear that it's not the, the crack you would expect. There's sort of this echoing sound from within as if the statue is actually hollow. Uh, right. Did everyone uh, else hear that? Uh, yeah, I did. Also, um, sounded hollow. Onyx is harder than marble, so you'd be more likely to break the, the head of the, the, the marble bust than... Why didn't you say that? Yeah, I tried to, but she, she threw it too quickly. I, I didn't get an opportunity. <laughs> Thanks, Point Dexter. <laughs> it was a missed opportunity then. <laughs> <laughs> All right then, Smarty Full Pants. Circle. What is denser and more hard than uh, I really shouldn't be making that joke? Saran's <laughs> head. Saran <laughs> starts to draw well, back uh, like a goat ready to charge. <laughs> granite or or like diamond would would be effective. Oh sure, let me just whip out an oh. axe made of diamonds. I mean, I have. Does a anyone have here. any diamonds? You I do. Have one right here. Yeah. So if you put the diamond on the statue and then hit it with something, it will break it. Oh. It could, or it could break the thing that you're hitting it with. Teamwork makes the or, dream work. Sarayan so picks you up your fingers. The bus to get it is ready. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, Melvin. So when you oh, said okay. hollow, was it the bus that was hollow or the statue that was hollow? The statue. The statue yeah. it sounded like yeah. Do we try to break off part of this onyx? I'm, I'm, I'm going to use Mage Hand to hold this this mar this uh, diamond in place so that Good it call. Call. I'm not my, my actual hand fingies. is nowhere near it. I ain't healing broken fingies. This is dumb. All right. Saray <laughs> is holding the bust, and she's ready to uh, make a second, I guess. Uh, is this for reference, what I just... Peter, this is the uh, 50 gold diamond that I use as the material component for chromatic orb. Okay. Would I just roll a d20 again? You will, uh, we'll call this a, uh, attack roll with advantage. Oh, that's very generous. Thank you, DM. Yeah. I'm feeling really inspired. I just needed to warm up, you know what I mean? It's been oh, a while yeah, since yeah, yeah. I, uh, it's definitely put what the everyone shot else or thinks. shot the put. <laughs> that was an eight. Oh, even better, that was a nine. <laughs> Uh, Total? What is your strength modifier? Total? Yeah, sadly, yes. I rolled an eight and then a nine. Um, so my strength modifier is plus two. <laughs> me hurts me. So again, you anyone else want to try this? Swings Rian? this piece of marble, <laughs> and it just you hear it crack, and uh, uh, the diamond is dislodged from Melvin's mage hand and just ping uh, just makes a dent and in fact tears a little divot into one of the pastoral paintings over one, over um, Mariah's shoulder just having barely uh, missed her are you okay Mariah am I bleeding nope no no you look great Doll goes over and gets the diamond and flies it back over to Melvin. Thank you. Rian, do you want to try to do it? Sure, I'll give it a go. Were I'll you on the Shoppa team at your preparatory I don't school? understand why no. we have to throw it. <laughs> we can just it seems bonk a little. It. I did a try to do that last impetus. time, and I'm still oh, okay. bad right. at it. I'm so distracted right. by the abs. I'm like, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Why? I do, are abs distracting? I've never seen them. It's the rain. Depends grabs. on the kind of abs and uh, who they're a on. Hand. 
<laughs> grabs oh. one of Debris' hands and puts it on the abs. Okay. You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> It's like nodding, knowing me, like, right? You know, it, it does actually sort of feel like a washboard. That's very yeah. compelling. It's super compelling. Um, yeah, I will try breaking it. I With what? I don't know what to say. Using the diamond the method thing. again. Yeah. I'll hold the diamond <laughs> up with the, uh... the mage hand again. I'll, I'll right. use a bust as a hammer. Serene hands off the bust. <laughs> Is it on. Attack roll with advantage, yeah? yeah. Do, do you not yes. have a hammer? I pull Debris back oh, from I the think statue. I do. Let me have a look. <laughs> Hooked javelin net plate. No, I don't. So, would creating undead be bad, Mariah? See, it depends on who you talk to. No. Action. Wait, yes. Certainly gone. Oh, because there's been plenty of people <laughs> who use it against us. So I'm plus six. So I get advantage still, yeah, DM. You do. Um, and as you go to swing, yeah. Priya, sorry, don't roll yet. Um, oh, I've already have. It's too late. You'll you'll have to. Well, don't just don't tell me. You'll uh, have to re-roll because as you're about to swing this thing, you feel this intense rage kind of bloom into your mind, and you're painfully aware of the axe at your side no and you're way. just like I should be swinging with this axe this is what I should be using and you make the roll with this advantage which will counteract your advantage so make a regular roll with the axe yeah oh yeah. okay so so are you I use the axe no with the with the no. with oh, the uh okay. with, with the weapon you choose okay. to swing with the the thing uh, so. I rolled a 15 so that is 20 that'll be good enough uh <laughs> it's not that's a little bit trivial, but still fun. It has AC 14, so you do hit. So roll a, um, roll a, we'll, we'll call, uh, roll a D6. Add your strength modifier for the damage. Six total. Six total. All right. Yeah. So it cracks. You can see these uh, fissures beginning to um, appear across the abdomen, and some dust starts to. Uh, drift down to the floor. You like it's nearly broken. I will use the axe this time. Feels good in your hand. Go ahead and swing. Remember, it is for you a plus one. Yeah, I've got axe. it down. It's, uh, not advantage, no. Are, are no. you still using the diamond? No. Uh, I can if you need, but probably not. Uh, if I not, rolled back. an That's eight, fine. so that is uh, fifteen. Yep. Go ahead and roll that damage. One d ten. What's inside? And it splits and ten crumbles. Damage. A loud um, sound as it uh, begins to shatter. The different tentacles kind of now fall, cracking into different pieces as the body... Oh no! Um, oh no! The, the chest itself just kind of crumbles away. The head topples and rolls to your feet, Inaris. And it all crumbles down. And you see inside a hollow space and just sitting inside sort of the... I guess the pelvic area, the legs weren't hollow, but the chest and the head were. So just down, uh, I guess the pelvic floor, <laughs> that's a terrible way to say it, but kind of in that part of the statue is a um, curled up, uh, uh, rolled up piece of paper. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> What happened was having internet uh, issues? Should I? Or... <laughs> there we go. It was kind of like that, actually. Yeah. What, what did you <laughs> ask? Um, <laughs> Thanks. Instant replay. <laughs> How about... I can't help myself. I'm fine. Just in case we mage hand that shit out instead of touching it. Oh, uh, sh sure. I, I can do that. I'll, I'll use my hand to lift that out. <laughs> 
Sarayan shoots an impetuous look at Melvin. I want to treat someone else's intellectual property for once. You, you, you're welcome to take a look at it first. I just figured it would be better not to touch it. Well, I didn't touch it. You know you want to. What's it say, Melvin? Can you unfurl it with that little hand? Are they still will... talking about the abs? No, they're talking <laughs> <laughs> I will attempt to unfurl the... All day, all the, abs. Uh, the scroll with Mage Hand, if I can. Okay. Um, if you need help with another Mage Hand, hand I can summon I, mine. I, I also have one. <laughs> so do I. Saran holds out her actual hand. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to imagine this is like... I don't know. That's got to be a, a difficult thing to do. Like all these remote hands with no actual feeling Put your trying left to all. Mage hand do. It's like Put Surgeon your Simulator. Left Everyone's mage just hand like boggling everything <laughs> and <try laughs> unrolling it. Finally just falls on the floor and unrolls. <laughs> um, we did it! Yay! There you go. I, I should note too. Um, well, I'm. Um, do that in a second. The text um, bears a short message. It says, shadowed fingers, eyes like glass, beware the below. It is signed L. Dolan and- um, Is it beware the below or bear, beware the blow? Beware the below. Thank you. Uh, Quickly, we Signed completed. By that was a... an intentional schwa, not an emphatic one. <laughs> uh, we completed a level two hype train. Nice. Wow! So a massive thank you to Pixie for twelve hundred bits and seven gifted subs. Manx for two hundred bits. Operason for one hundred bits. Pigu for one hundred bits. Chelsea for one gifted sub and Buddy for one gifted sub. I think I've got everyone. Thank uh, you, friends. That means we'll do another fifteen. What is it? Oh, that's ten. Uh, that's ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Um, do, do what do you want to do for inspiration? That's, that's probably about four inspirations. Um, yeah. That's more than that. It's probably I'll, inspiration. Yeah. Up to you. We'll get, we'll we'll get, I have one already. So. We'll dish out to half or so. Um, so we'll do three. Yeah. Inspiration. Ah shit. Yes. Yes. I got a two. I got a rock. Oh, Peter. I got a rock. Peter, so myself, and Liz. Like I have inspiration. So does Prion and so does Sarayan. So mark that on your character sheet, Sarayan. Despite Ice. the abs crumbling in front of you, you feel inspired. <laughs> Sarayan sifting through the ashes that were once the abs. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hmm. Uh, that was signed by whom? The name is L. Dolan. So L. Period. Dolan. Thank you. Spanish um, for the Dolan. <laughs> will you throw that up in chat, Mariah? Yeah, or Peter probably has a text uh, type. Yeah, we'll there. put it in the chat, please. <laughs> and it actually matches an inscription or a um, signature on the base of the statue. You see oh. the. You can surmise it was left there by the sculptor. Where now? Interesting. <clears throat> um, other doors in the hallway, I guess, since we've uh, made short work of this poor <laughs> and sculpted man. As this has, um, as. Th Creon made that final blow. You felt the house rumble and kind of groan. Um, there was the loud crumbling of the statue itself, but there was a shaking, almost earthquake-like rumble from the home itself that gradually then subsided. Doll flies over as the group leaves, picks up a large chunk of obsidian, or a Onyx and brings it over to another. Okay. Where are you headed next, friends? I'm the door near me. Okay. I, I guess Who's last out of the room? 
Uh, probably, probably, probably me. Probably Nether. Oh, I was oh, thinking okay. just because she didn't want to leave the abs, but <laughs> it's better for <laughs> Nether to be the last one out of the room. That's fine. That Nether would fine. wait until everybody left before she got the the onyx. So, as okay, the yeah, well, the Nether. <clears throat> so Prion opens the door into this next room, and as you two are after you, no, after you, just doing the uh, uh, Midwest standoff uh, there. Um, the you hear this sort of crackling sound behind you um, as you turn around Sarayan as nether as you um, inform doll of this doll looks and you see that um, the head on the bust has been restored to its place no longer broken unblemished seemingly undamaged and as you think that's strange and you look between all of them they all look a bit more gaunt less skin on the face lips beginning to recede back haunt level two achieved nope <laughs> Um, and your companions open up this next room um, comfortable or what was once a comfortable sitting room um, the stuffing is emerging from all of these uh, different pieces of furniture there is a giant head mounted above the um uh, the fireplace of the largest goat you've ever seen. Um, strange, but there it is, taxidermy goat. And really, classic. Yeah. Other In than that, this close is a simple sitting room. <laughs> anyway. Anything odd about that fireplace? Do we go into the room? Are there baked goods? Is there a um, None that you see at the moment. No. Prion, check something Still. at the fireplace. I will go and have a look at the fireplace. Oh, Prion. That's not what I said. <laughs> Can I go what? Sorry? <laughs> From the safety of distance, oh. check something at the fireplace and see if an arm comes out. I will check. Oh, I definitely the heard. Fireplace. Check the fireplace. <laughs> yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah. Chuck, chuck something at the fireplace. There's like an empty candlestick. Um, the wood chuck, and check it at the uh, the, on the table. You could throw at it or something like that. Yeah, I'll just under arm, arm it over to okay. it. Okay, you just toss it and it clang, 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 clang. Um, bounces around inside the stone. The metallic impact reverberates through the room. And you hear nothing. Gadrazil goes over to the chimney and the fireplace and sort of. Are there any more cupcakes? If you're a good boy. <gasps> Where would I go to find more cupcakes? Um. Uh. You hear? Don't chew the furniture. Don't break the walls. Don't tread the carpets. Don't run in my halls. My home. My home. Let me stay. We all hear this? <laughs> no, it's just, uh. Gadrazel at this point. I just want to call him Gadrafane so bad. So I hear it where I am. Uh, you hear just maybe a whisper. Actually, you have a very high passive, don't you? Mm -hmm. 17. Uh, you, if you're that close, then yes, you hear a bit of that whispering coming from somewhere up the chimney. Is this bottle a real bottle? It is. I would like to expect its contents. 
Is there another message in it? No, uh, you move and there's actually a, um, a wooden ship in a bottle. Yeah. I haven't had one of these in a long time. That's cute. What kind yes. of ship? <laughs> um, it a man looks a floaty one. Schooner. Uh, <laughs> a schooner. It's, no, How many this is a does it have? this is a barkentine. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, okay. He's so glad you asked that. <laughs> Throw it in chat. I, <laughs> What's a barkentine? I will take the ship. I will take the barkentine in the bottle and put it in my pack. Okay, it's a strange uh, form of rigging, but yeah, that's okay. Why is it strange? Describe how it's strange. <laughs> Uncommon for the Sword Coast, probably. Uh, it's an adv- it's a, uh, advanced sailing, um, probably done by some more experimental war vessels or um, more expensive trading vessels from Waterdeep, I would say. Um, just because it's... Well, it's, it is a schooner. Technically, it has three masts, but it is rigged in a more advanced way than your typical you know forgotten realms just square sails all facing forward um two of the masts have the forward and back style um rigging so D hey, I worked on I one don't want to you know there's no <laughs> don't need to go into it but yeah barkentine <laughs> but since you asked so that's a boat <laughs> It is much more complicated than a boat. A boat. It's a Please. barking team. Yeah. Dare you. Please. Oh, oh, hey, it looks like ours. Eh, it's a little different. <laughs> Did you just say it looks like ours? Well, a little <laughs> bit. Uh, you mean in the fact well, that it's made of wood and could and float? Floats and goes in on the water. water where I don't want to be. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, while this conversation about the barking team is happening, uh, Gabriel comes over and whispers something in Nether's ear. I walk out and start walking to the north. And while I'm doing that, I will tell everyone that I can hear the creature in that fireplace as well. <clears throat> something in it? I, the witch, with many elbows, I walk up to this door and I'll open it. Uh, this is a another simple sitting room. This one's smaller um, with a unadorned fireplace. Broken pitcher on a table. Some shattered plateware as well. Um, nothing else particularly interesting. Okay. I will go here and do the one on the right first. On the right you say? This room is a bit more interesting. This looks to have once been a large ballroom. Um, There was once a web-like lattice work type of design to the wood floor that is now marred by decay cobwebs and such. Um, There's a short stage for musicians um, in the far end, um, overlooked by a pair of stained glass windows. Even the, um, in the sort of perpetual dusk that seems to be in the air, there's this faint light coming through them. I hmm. smell any gold. Um, here, no, just what's on your companions. Well, shall we? Yeah. Uh, I'll open the north one. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to go into the ballroom. Um, there are a couple. Yeah, same as Yeah. Oh, you can go in the ballroom. We'll just open this. Yeah, while he's uh, opening here. the door, I'm just I'm gonna like scooch past him. Okay. Um, the 
the rain follows. sounds of your own footsteps on this wood floor echo almost cavernously in here. It, um, the silence and lack of music, lack of life is amplified somehow by your own footsteps disturbing the silence. Um, Prion, you open this door and reveal a conservatory. There are desiccated vines sprawling across tables, foggy glass windows, um, once you assume greenhouse glass, um, now mostly frosted over, uh, very dirty, um, not much light coming in at all. Just an endless bit of um, dead plants out of pots, seedlings, long discarded, unwatered, dry soil that is long past any bit of fertility, except in the far, the upper left corner, um, growing with vibrance and spectacular health is a vine with... Is that an assassin um, vine again? No, 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 no. It's, um, it's, it's growing around looking perfectly healthy. It has, um, a, uh, a small green leaves and um, little purple bell-shaped flowers and then beautiful um, deep, rich purple berries. Ooh. DM, can I speak with plants? Um... Interesting. You do have a charm of plant command, can't, don't you? Yeah. Um, I still haven't been able to find it on uh, D and D Beyond to add it to my sheet, but. Oh, okay. I I think it's. I just I happen think to it remember. Exists. It's in. Uh, um. Does the battle axe exist Salt as well? Campaign, so. What's that? Does the battle axe exist? Uh no, it's just a plus one battle axe for you at the moment. That gives you seven health. Oh yes, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, your max health is increased by seven. Yeah, it's not a part of D and D Beyond for some reason. Oh. Odd that, but at any uh, rate, I did remember I had it. I have a link to it right now. Wait, now I have it too. Yeah. Why does it not show up on D in, on my parent character sheet? Oh well. Anyway, uh, I would like, yes, I would like to sort of step into the room, cock my head, and I put my hands out to either side, and I sort of send forth my awareness to communicate with the plant. Okay. Um... I was wondering if there was a limit, limited sentient to communicate commit for some commands. Okay. Um, you see the all of the leaves kind of rustle and shake a bit, and this entire uh, tangle of vines shifts just a bit, and you see almost like a little bit of light just pulse in each of its berries, and then it sits, and you can feel its sentience. You can feel a a mind there connected to yours. Hello. Hello. All of your neighbors have faded away, but you remain. Why are you special? I am loved. I am tended. Who tends you? The lady comes, showers me with water, and whispers prayers to the sky, then walks back into the air. This lady 
Does she look like me? Or does she look like this one with metal on? Not like you. Not like her. Like that one. And then a vine kind of extends, pointing towards Mariah as she walks through the door into the ballroom. Um, I suppose, though, Nether, what does Nether's hat of disguise have her look like at the moment? Um, interesting. Uh, I could use that, I suppose. I could... I just... The plant, you know, would react. Nether is very peculiar, peculiar looking. <laughs> you know, she's yes. not, definitely not human. So, um, right. I was thinking more in terms of, uh, I was trying to be more general in terms of appearance and like right. what and they're wearing. And that's why it pointed to... towards Mariah. Uh, just picked a um, human more, in this case, half elven. Got it. Do you have a purpose other than to grow? Is there something you guard, something you protect? I do not know. Are your berries good to eat or are they poison? My berries can be a healer's salve or a poisoner's tincture. Would you be willing to part with some of your berries. I'd like to take them and plant them elsewhere. Yes. So my offspring beyond these solid, solid floors. Doll flies in and takes a few berries. Okay. Is anyone else stepping into this room? Neris is just listening right now and just sort of watching to see what happens. Yeah, I will step in for protection on Nether. Um, did, I'm entirely are there any, aware of that conversation. Are there any papers or, or books or anything inside there that are visible from the doorway? Um, yeah, there's a book on one of the benches. Um, seems to be laid open. Maybe a ledger okay. or something like that. I'd, I'd go in and take a look at that. Okay, anyone else? Uh, I'm in there. I'm with Mariah. Stays at, the other stays at the door. Okay, so the, the two of you go in. We will do the. We will see what happens next when we get to the ballroom. But um, right now, you guys walk in and feel a bit of warmth from this area. You don't know if it's the, the earth or the windows. Maybe some extra light is coming in. And then everything starts to go a bit blurry inside and then as it clarifies suddenly this room is incredibly vibrant um you try to blink off the blur and it's the conservatory seems alive completely filled with flowers and a transparent woman is there with a veiled hat and parasol striding through the room she pauses here and there to admire a bloom or adjust a pot and then as soon as she appears, she vanishes and winks out of existence, and the room lies in ruin once more. Near where she was, a trowel wiggles on a table and then find, falls down onto the floor. Then a pitchfork that was leaning against the wall, the handle tips down. And then suddenly you hear the rustling as every garden implement in this room begins to shift and suddenly animate and course across the room. Um, everyone in this room, if 
find my dice. Um, is subject as Prion a um, uh, pitchfork um, comes flying at you. Obviously, I, I was trying to protect Nether, so is there anything I can add to Nether? Nether didn't actually go in the room. I oh. did all of that from the, the doorway. Melvin's in there. Melvin went in to look oh, at the ledger. Oh, well, then I'll be protecting Melvin then. Okay. Um, as this is just kind of things coursing through, um, I can... Um, I will subtract one of the attacks from him, but as you are directly imposing yourself, I will roll advantage on mm -hmm. the uh, attack. So, cool. So the first one comes at you, Prion. Uh, with a natural one. Um, it's a little garden trowel that just <coughs> clings off your chest and you think, really? And then um, you see a large pitchfork and shovel coming your way as well. Um, I have a 15 and then a uh, it's 20 hit. 20 will hit, yeah. Okay, 20 hits. That's the one with advantage. That's a pitchfork. And then I have a... 19 and a so yeah 19 yeah that hits yeah okay so two hits um the guard of the implements deal a total of uh 11 points of piercing damage as they Damn. shoot through the room and then <laughs> clatter to the ground um And then I need you also to, no, that's it. Yeah. I'd step out of there if I were you. And Hi. as you do this as well, the um, one of the windows above, one of these frosted windows suddenly <laughs> cracks and the fissures in the glass spell out in a um, jagged font, the word uninvited. <laughs> Melvin, you can grab the book as these um, uh, different gardening implements begin to just kind of um, uh, rustle around on the ground. And you see this vine recoiling itself as if from fear, pulling back its berries, its flowers into the area of its pot and just sitting there inert while all of this happens. I'll, I'll grab I'll grab the book and then scurry out. Um, did you say that I was going to be taking an attack as well? Uh, Prion took uh, two uh, it attacks with advantage by just basically okay. shielding you. Uh, from thank you, Prion. That. Let's get out of here. Uh, I... Yeah, but can I make a quick nature oh, check to determine the Doll would have also are? been subject to that as Doll oh. in the room. I believe, right? Wasn't Doll in the room with them picking berries? Doll went over and got the berries, and I did say that Doll had returned back to Nether, but big deal if now Doll got hit. So it's up that's to you. No, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Um, little uh, little fake creature did not trigger the haunt, so. Um, can I make a quick nature check to determine the, what these berries are? Go ahead. You were on a roll with those. Yeah. 17. Um, yeah, this is Belladonna. A plant known for its medicinal and poisonous purposes. Um, just Very eating cool. the berry, obviously poisonous. They can be distilled into tinctures that help with... Um, various things. They are also a beauty product. Um, it's a sort of uh, pinnacle of fashion type of thing, but some ladies are known to um, squeeze the juice from them and then drop them in their eyes, which make them <laughs> dilate. Um, and it's said to be a beautiful, exciting look in some courtly places. Let's say I got a dozen or small or less. How many? Half a dozen. Half a dozen. Six belladonna berries. Mm -hmm. Is a member of. It's one of the most iconic members of the nightshade family. 
And the belt, that's actually where the Belladonna gets its name as well. The beautiful lady, as they used to put them in their eyes. Belladonna. What is as done the Italians would say. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay. Uh, and we move into the... Um, uh, now into the ballroom. Mariah and Saray and you enter. And again, it feels painfully empty and almost oppressively silent in this room. Um, as a precaution, I am going to keep uh, about a 10 foot distance from Sarayan, but I sort of wander into the middle of the room and kind of just spinning a little bit, taking in know, whatever there is to take in and see if there's anything to be found. Uh, Sarayan would like to ask a question of Mariah as she watches her kind of take in the space. Um, so, so I don't know much about, um, music or, or good places to, to play music, but this, this seems like, um, acoustically it, it would be kind of an, an ideal spot. Yeah, probably. I'd love to. Oh, I I just sort of like, you know, whistle a couple times, like moving a little bit down, like maybe a stretch of 10 to 15 feet in the hall, just trying to get a sense of like how the sound is bouncing around as Sarayan continues her question. Um, I, if it's not too much to ask, I I would love to hear you play. Just, just a little bit in, in a space like this. I've only ever heard you on the on the ship. Oh. I, if there's any clattering from the other room, I just like wait for a moment. Y'all, y'all, right in there? I just making friends. Okay. And um, I... would would you ordinarily take take the stage? And Sarayan gestures up at the little. <laughs> stage area and then goes and sits in front of the stage crisscross applesauce looking expectantly at Mariah gesturing excitedly I I mean if you want to I kind of chuckle and I'll make my way towards the stage I'll peer around the back see if there's anything yay Serene begins applauding (laughs) cacophonous applause (laughs) Anything up and, here? Uh, she dies. Yep, you can oh walk my on God, out. No! The curtains are drawn. <laughs> All right. Uh, drawn open, so not drawn closed. Oh, before oh, they're withdrawn. I'll uh, pull my blue wood violin out and and I fix the tuning on a couple strings and begin to play. And um, given that it is, oh, what was that? I was just sort of as I as Nether hears you begin to play. As I wonder if that will please the spirits or annoy them. (laughs) Please, Uh, Serayan. It's a haunted house. For Serayan's benefit, I will um, use the um, illusion enchantment that's a part of this instrument to make little like. Uh, swirls of water and bubbles and little like bits of coral dance around in the air. Just for oh. Serayan. Yeah. It's like the episode of Futurama where Fry writes the whole opera for Lila. <laughs> <laughs> it comes out, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. But better, I, but better. I'm sorry. So the rest of you hear um, um, after you hear a clank of what you assume might have been just maybe Prion knocking over a bunch of garden gardening equipment or something like that from the other room. <laughs> and then oh, uh, you just kind of sigh and then start playing your song. And uh, Sarayan, you see the windows behind Mariah almost light up a bit. There's this, the light increases and becomes just a little bit, um, <clears throat> a little bit more sparkly, a little bit more iridescent behind her. And then Mariah, you feel a sense of comfort and a like a warm hand 
is placed on your back. And you is what it feels like as you're playing. Interesting. Wow. Are you making the windows light up too? I look up. <laughs> Can I see the windows light up? Um, maybe. Yeah, kind of. Um, That's looks to be that way. Up. And as you turn, you feel the, the hand softly remove itself from your back, and then you hear soft footsteps leading down to the other side of the stage. This is a happy tune, correct? Hi, happy-ish. A dirge. You know, it's, it's not a dirge. It's, it's something that, um, it's got a beat to it, but I was trying to sort of mimic the feeling of waves. Serene is swaying. It's a turgid she didn't dirge. She's doing it. It's a turgid <laughs> dirge. I can tell you, it's in three. It's in three. Okay. Dirge, and dirge, 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 dirge. Moving over that, and you can hear the the um, the um, um, the sorry the stairs. Wow, I was looking for the word stairs. Um, the, the wooden steps on the other side of the stage creak as if slowly someone is walking down, and then slowly the um, closet door here opens itself. That wasn't me, I... was it? Do you Keep continue wild. playing? I keep playing, but I shift a little bit towards the stairs. And I'm I'm still playing, but I, I'm looking down to see if there's anything that I can see from beyond that door. It seems mostly wrecked, but there's this pile of um Please tell me of, there's a base in there. <laughs> oh yeah, Serene pulls it out. <laughs> and a bassist. Um <laughs> Where? Where'd you guys go? Um <laughs> go Are we getting the band back together? <laughs> Oh, so we go for a long time. <laughs> he better be practicing. <laughs> I'm gonna kill the bassist. Gonna you guys said you were gonna help with teardown. Um, <laughs> the, uh, you see a, a, a sort of pile of fabric start to move and shift, and then one little corner animates, almost like a bit of a snake or something. But you realize it looks like it's being tugged by something invisible. A long. Um, piece of a long long piece of cloth is being yanked out of this pile um as the rest the of you hands. i guess are the rest of you joining into the ballroom by chance by this point um the rain would yeah. definitely be looking over her shoulder at mariah kind of gesturing like she's going to go in i yeah. i sort of uh, mouth to her hold on for a sec and i shift the tune a little bit um swapping over to kind of a 4-4 four, four melody and mm -hmm. using that swap uh, cast C Invisibility. Hmm. Okay, make a 7-4 um... action. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love I guess you can, so yeah, using that as the cast, you um, cast it. Um, C Invisibility. All right. Um... You suddenly open your eyes, your mind, um, to the anything invisible. And it's not invisible, but there almost seems to be something standing in a world adjacent to the one you're currently in. This is that sort of ethereal plane. And it's barely even present there. But there's a woman in a house dress, but a beautiful one, um, like like a, a lady of the house, but still one who, um, uh, um, but with that same sort of apron, it's the same form that you saw at once during the seance. And she is pulling out this, what looks to be a banner um, from the closet. It has some writing on it, but it's currently folded over, tough to read. And she's pulling it over and she kind of looks up to you and realizes you're, um, that you are staring directly at her. And she looks at you with a surprised, um, hopeful smile. 
and then is about to unfold this banner and then her smile quickly fades and she drops it in place and she looks past you the look of horror on her face and suddenly withdraws through the air and vanishes and Mariah suddenly the curtains slide shut and a cold wind blows through the room the light vanishes from behind the stained glass and each of you in this room hear a voice your knees hurt everyone in this room you're like you've been kneeling on stone for hours and you feel a pain in your wrists as if bound by chains and um and coarse woven cord you hear this voice echo through your mind i'll give you a simple choice my misguided knights you can join Lady Silvra, and I'll entomb you all within my fortress's walls. Or forsake your commander, bear witness to her execution, and then walk free to tell all of Dranzorg's justice. My mercy knows but a moment, friends. Choose! This voice feels especially familiar to you, Prion. Something about this voice is tied to the axe. And who is who are the ones who asked questions to the spirit with the axe? I think I yeah, I think I did. I did. Was that part this, of the first one? Yeah. I think I believe so. So the three of you feel this voice, this presence that has entered the room matches that entity. Okay. You, as it asks this, this I will reread the text, but you feel compelled um, to answer. It requires an answer from you. Mm. So, <clears throat> you hear the voice say, I will say again, um, I'll give you a simple choice, my misguided knights. You can join Lady Silvra, and I'll entomb you all within my fortress's walls, or forsake your commander, bear witness to her execution, and then walk free to tell all of Dranzorg's justice. My mercy knows but a moment, friends. Choose. Ooh, what did they choose? Dranzorg was the name? Indeed. We all hear it, but only all those of you the... hear it. All right. Not all of you recognize it. I wonder but if you that's feel what's behind... that there is a presence waiting for you to answer. I wonder if that's what's behind the bricked up wall. Hey. Do we have to choose? Oh. I don't forsake shit. Yeah, I'm not inclined to forsake things either. <laughs> but you're playing so beautiful. Very so Mariah has said she choose. will not forsake the commander. Will so not has forsake Sarayan. Yeah. yeah, same. Melvin and. Inaris, you feel the anger growing, you feel... I'll never forsake my goddess, but... So, no, if that's who you mean. Uh, my commander's been pretty good to me, so I'll, I'll stick by her. We love you, Mariah. <laughs> I don't know, I feel like commander is a title I held in a previous life. And in this oh. one, if you're the captain, yeah. if they mean you, what no, is Mariah? What did Mariah say? I, uh, I, I don't forsake shit. Ooh. Hmm. 
It's this weird feeling all of you are in where you're almost in someone else's shoes at this moment. I will partake of Dranzog's mercy. Is Nether the only one? <clears throat> Rayon hasn't decided yet, right? No, he did. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, seems like Melvin, not Melvin, uh, Debris the only one. All right. <clears throat> so, Nether, you become aware of a, what feels like a, um, uh, a worn out, haggard, battle wearied woman in armor looking about the room. You see, she's there for just a moment and she's looking about as if identifying eyes of invisible betrayers all around her. And she looks you straight in the eye and then continues on. And then. <gasps> Let's out this screeching scream, and I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. The rest of you all hear this as well, but do not need to make saving Does throws. she look like the woman that I saw in the... Exactly um, like her, yes. Uh -huh. Very nice. Wisdom saving throw, eh? Bye, everybody! Oh, that was a wisdom check. Sorry. So, plus three to that. Okay, 17. you have succeeded... Um, and take, um... Can I add the plus oh. two? Is she in my aura? Is that, like, always a thing? Doesn't look like it. But it probably not, but, um, she, um, <laughs> will, uh, succeed regardless, um, with the 17. Okay. So, uh, take 12 points of psychic damage. Whew. Uh, and in suddenly, case, in case it matters, whatever dealt that damage to me would take ten points of cold damage from Ag it, armor of Agathis. Uh, Unless does it does it trigger the armor of Agathis? Uh, what is the? Um, you have to be hit by an attack, right? Yes, I do. Never mind. This is not an attack. Yeah, got it. And I have um, an out of character player question. Sure. Uh, baby's first paladin so when I have um, so I have the aura of protection that's up all the time right regardless of like whether or not I'm in combat as long as people are yeah. within 10 feet of me as right. long as you're not incapacitated or okay cool thanks guys <clears throat> so cool. nether sort of um, reels a little bit and Sorry, Nether, I just, are you okay? I just wanted to see. I look behind me. Is there anything there? No. Like where, where suddenly, the, the empty, the empty nature of this room returns. Saran, where you <clears throat> saw that fabric moving? Do you want to check if there's anything in there? I could have sworn I saw that apron lady tugging yeah. or something. Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, the, she pulled that cloth almost out the doorway. Um, it's just kind of laying down on the ground there. Serene will just pick it up. And okay. You pull it out and it's it. decayed. It's moth-eaten, um, frayed at the ends, and you turn it out. And it um, is a banner that looks like it would be long enough to hang at the uh, top of this stage here. And it simply says... Um, happy birthday, Cedra and Dominic. Uh, okay. Um, it looks like there was supposed to be some sort of celebration here for um, <clears throat> our friends, the Daenerys. Uh, okay. The hm. rain folds it up and respectfully places it back in the little closet and kind of steps um, gingerly backwards out of the room. If I'm remembering correctly, that's the first evidence we've come across while we've been here that is a very pointed link to them. Right? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. 
this is the spirit that that was the, that was the the spirit that pulled on that was the one spirit that nobody has spoken to, right? Correct. Yep. Yeah, sure. lady. <clears throat> so a little meta here. Um, the uh, I guess his name is Dranzog wanted us to get the axe. Lady Silvra wants us to kill or get rid of an, a, a, a witch. Mm -hmm. We don't know who this other person is yet or what they want. Yeah. And, I mean, it's clear in some way that the, you know, Silver, Silvra was her name? Silvra and Dranzor? Silvra and Dranzor. They're in opposition to one another, but it's not clear whether the servant woman plays into that relationship at all. All questions that will continue to be, um, or all things that will continue to be revealed as more clues and more seances are conducted and the um, exactly what happened here and how it related to um, <clears throat> Dominic and Cedra uh, we'll be, we'll continue to search for that, but we're going to do it after I show. Oh, very break. good. Well, welcome back, everyone. We are in um, a bit of a haunted house scenario here. Uh, the party Hold is it. searching for, um, kind of trying to uncover the origin, uh, the uh, the not the origin, but the backstory by just what happened between Cedra Donaire and Dominic Donaire. They have found three spirits. Um, within this house, one of a silver armored woman, one of a burly man with an ax and another of a, um, a more warm, benevolent woman wearing a dress and an apron. Now they have also learned, heard the voice for the very first time of the burly man with the ax talking about demanding that some knights abandon their commander or be sealed within the walls of his castle. He offered them mercy and none of the group um, of characters here accepted that except for Nether. And when Nether did, um, she, uh, everyone heard the scream of the woman in armor, which shook Nether's mind to the core and dealt some damage so they found they have found that these two spirits are opposed the relationship beyond that is not particularly clear they did see the woman in the apron pull out a um, banner that said happy birthday cedra and dominic and it was um decorated you know in a way that you would think of um uh uh a, a children's party to be decorated um shapes and um little animal heads not actual heads but animal drawing heads on the banner um you have to specify in haunted houses sometimes you know that's what animal heads no 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 nothing of the sort but yes yeah, so that is where we are now all right all right all right all right not creepy at all everyone uh, everyone got their head on straight everyone okay I will be. Yeah. I, I suppose yeah. I should have stayed loyal to the commander. You know, it could have been that. It could have been a situation where uh, Axe Man would have come and chopped your head off. You never know which way the coin's going to turn. Do, do you need? Not. Do you need some help? And I'll offer to heal you with some lay on hands. I wouldn't mind a bit. Okay. Um, Saray approaches Debris and lays hands. Where where do you, where do you feel like your does your head hurt or I saw you grab your head. It does, it does hurt in my uh, May head. I? And she <laughs> she puts her hands on Debris. You feel head you see Debris and... sort of recoil back from you? Oh no! I'm so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll I'll go I'll go quickly. Um, and I'll give you how many points do I have? Uh, ten points. Ah, uh, uh, okay. All Five right. points. Five uh, points of healing. Okay. 
Five points and of I'm going to make a wisdom saving throw. Mariah got distracted and forgot to tell Soraya not to. <laughs> uh oh. Beep, 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 beep. Shit. Uh oh. Nether screams. Huh? Brings her hands Plus up two? to her face. Plus two? Ah! The save? I... Plus two to the save? Plus two. It's still a nine. Jeez. She falls unconscious. I. Oh my God, what did I do? Brilliant. Hold on, hold on. I can't remember the last time that this happened. Did did you need healing or did you just need to be woken up? I can't remember. Um. Last time it happened, we were in a sinking ship underwater. Yeah. <laughs> if I this recall. This is a little better. <laughs> yeah, this is a little bit of a. It, it, true. <laughs> Not <Yeah>. so bad. <laughs> I was just trying. You to don't help. know what's. <laughs> Okay, fine, 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 okay. Hey, it, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, sorry, I, I got very distracted there for a sec. I will um, use a healing word. So sorry. So, a soft little melody under my breath. I'm gonna hold you close and give you six points of healing. You know, there's eyelids flutter and she sits up. Sorry. Nether, I'm so sorry. I'm so it's sorry. It's not your fault, Serene. It's, it's not your fault. Can I help you up at least? I promise I won't try to heal you. Should I just not touch you? I don't... Thrain, it's okay. It's okay. It, it, it's my bad. I forgot to warn you. I was... It, it's okay. I'm, I'm so sorry. Oh, you mean well, Serene. I, I thought that since we've known each other for while now that it wouldn't be the same, but I'm, I'm sorry, there's... It just, it feels... It... It reminds me of... A very bad time. I'm sorry. Um, I'm, I'm better now. I think you, it, it did help. Hey! After we get... Debris back to her feet. I'm just gonna give Serene a quick little squeeze on the shoulder. You're all right. All right. Shake I'm it off. I'm sorry. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Right. All right. Prion, oh. prick a door, any door. I'd, I'd like to note um, after the debacle with the. Um, gardening implements before entering the ballroom um, Melvin took a moment to uh, cast mage armor and uh, apply his paper mache armor again just in case hmm. I will head out of the door and go to this one here north Covering something up that I accidentally revealed. Uh, I was looking away. I didn't see it. Oh, good. I didn't see me. I didn't see shit. Man, I don't betray shit. I didn't see shit. Ow, for wow. Wow. Oh man. <laughs> um, Prion, this closet is conspicuously empty. After that, um, by the way, wait, wait a minute. When that sc scream you mean happened, inconspicuously em empty or conspicuously, there's been stuff around. This one is just completely empty. Got it. Checking for traps. <laughs> it's not the same as saying it's suspiciously it's empty, but I wouldn't put it past Peter just to say something. It's suspiciously empty. <clears throat> Just to be honest, I was um, uh, just <laughs> quoting the the book, so <laughs> <laughs> All right, sure. I claim no credit nor fault for that for that strange choice of adjective. It's frustratingly empty. Is that a door also at the end of the hall next to him, or is that just? An it is. There's one more. I will open that one then. Um, you open it to a uh -huh. kitchen 
with a pantry whose door is open. Um, with a mess that conspicuously gives open. Anxiety. Yeah, so uh, a rack previously suspended from the ceiling has crashed to the ground here, um, crushing a table and scattering rusted pots and cooking implements across the floor. A sizable iron stove is built into the north wall and several doors, as you can see, lead from this room. Here, one to where you've already been. One to which you can only assume since you know sort of the outer layout would lead to the uh, back of the home. Mm. Okay. okay. So <clears throat> the only options we've got are the stairs. Well, no. Or Surely no, there's such a door a large, up the top there. Such a large stove would require a large chimney. Also, there's a door up there that if I have my oh, geography here. of this house correct, probably leads to some stairs. Ah, I'm going to open the, the door then. Of that blackness. Wait, don't, don't step in the room. Remember with the... Oh, sorry. Huh? You step in? Yes. And? Not it's uh, just messy. You kick around some pots and stuff, but you don't see anything happen. Die. It doesn't get attacked by knives and forks and things like that. No, not, that's not even, not even a little bit. Stop giving him ideas. Not. Sorry. <laughs> this time. <laughs> but as you throw, Sean open really that, wants to fight with some. As you throw open forks. that door, Prion, you hear a. Meow. Meow. Sorry, sorry, I had beans for lunch. Where? I look, oh I look for it. <laughs> Where? Sounds like coming from down the stairs. Oh. I, cats. I guess we're going this way, I. Yeah. Wait, Prion. Let me send Dahl first this time. Sure. <coughs> Dahl, see in the dark. Um, no. I can I can send my my book spirit if you'd like. Can your book see in the dark? Yes. What about your beaver? Okay. Save Gadge well, yourself for when something's I, actually attacking us. Can't my just beaver ask is the lady useless about in her the beaver. dark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I'm sorry. Um, I missed most of the okay. beaver talk the first time it happened, so I gotta put my two cents in while the topic's hot. Um, I will. <laughs> Yum. It's so much to. Yeah. Okay. Hot beaver. I will uh, manifest the mind of my of my spellbook um, as the uh, floating weird as shit. Floating blue text will appear uh, behind my head and float around, and it has dark vision and some other stuff. Oh, it sheds dim light. In fact. <laughs> Okay. And dark vision out to 60 feet. There we go. Got it. Gotcha. So I'll send that down the stairs. It can go up to 300 feet away from me. I suppose okay. I should it's everybody. And you can you see regularly through it? Is that what you said? Um, I. It can talk to me telepathically. And. It, it can telepathically share what it sees and hears. Okay. So What's its passive perception? I don't know if that perception? means it can actually like transmit vision to me or not. But um, your passive perception is it a? Can I it think it make... just uses my passive. Let me see. Okay. I can just put this into chat. Oh god. Yeah. Oh, god. Very long. Bizarrely, Gadrozil does Using have dark its vision senses. Oh. Okay. But he's probably too dumb to know that, so it's fine. Looking for cupcakes. Following his nose. Does he know he's a beaver? Oh, you're Why awakened you really like spellbook. Does that have stats? It didn't give me a stat block, so I don't think so. Huh. Interesting. It does. It does say it. It's an. Obvious. It says it uses the stats of your awakened yeah. spellbook. Very strange. Have oh. you been harboring another entity this whole time? <laughs> <laughs> sort of. It is sentient. Yeah. It doesn't talk to me, though. So. Um, 
yeah, I don't have a spell block for it, so I would assume it uses my own passive unless Z says otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> we do put an awful lot of trust Z? in Z. Well, yeah, we do. Z's like, how do well, I want uh, this to unfold? We will look into that. The hell is that taking another spellbook? It's one of the features of the Order of the Scribe Wizard that I play. Yeah, but there's no stat block. Yeah, not Isn't even like because <laughs> with a Google search. Rico says they function like spiritual weapon. That's but cool. the spiritual weapon doesn't have a stat block. I mean, it says it has dark vision out to 60 feet, so presumably you can see that that far at least. Okay. Um, interesting. All right. So it goes down. It will illu- It will show um, basically a uh, cellar down below. Um, in fact, an extensive wine cellar. Ooh, um, make a perception check. The what? Seeing your books <laughs> stats, but I guess yours. Right? Uh, that'll be a 17. Okay. Um, it looks and it says, it sees, um, just a little bottle kind of shift and fall to the floor and then it, and it sees like a little tail just duck behind a barrel. Maybe like it's a, you, you get the sense that, um, Spectral floating letters have scared away whatever was meowing. I need a cat. I want a boat cat. All right, L- Lamora. Um. <laughs> uh, it, it looks like there's a cat down there. Um, it's probably hiding behind one of the barrels now. Does it happen Fine. to have glassy eyes? Or, or shadowed fingers. I didn't see. Shadowed fingies. <laughs> yeah, no, nothing. Shadow fingies. It it actually didn't really see it. It was <laughs> it, it got beat on its passive on your passive. It, it was able to hide from you. So you saw a glimpse of maybe something trying to hide from you um, down there. You still hear the no, no. Not very good at hiding, is it? sidle forward and uh, scooch past Mr. Melvin and Mr. Prion and stealth my way down the stairs. <laughs> okay. Mariah, be careful. I hope. I'm always careful. No, you're not. That's, that's such a lie. She slips. I can't be still. I'm ten. It's perfectly average. So I'll stay here. <laughs> Doll accompanies Mariah. I will too. You, cl- I, I, if, if Prion tries to come down, I'm literally gonna put right. a hand out and be like, "You walk." I want like, like an entire shot full of metal. Like, I, I want to do a stealth check just to, <laughs> just to see if I beat a ten. Oh, okay, maybe not. <laughs> Nearly. Maybe not. He takes one step, and I'm like. Clang! <laughs> Which the clang kind of reveals both of you as you descend. And sorry, I have revealed some map over here. Oh. I, I point a finger up at your face and I'm like, you are my least favorite person in this moment right now. Aye, <laughs> you won't be saying that when I get in the way of taking the hits for you. <laughs> well, it can change. Mariah, be nice to my knight. Shh. <laughs> All right. I very averagely creep down the stairs. Passively doll, creeping down the stairs. Doll, doll invisibly flies, <laughs> floating around your face. It's not distracting at all. Okay. Uh, who could could you guys also put yourselves on the? Uh, who, what's the order going down the stairs here? Mariah first, maybe Prion behind. Mm-hmm. Mariah right, with fine. doll like that. <laughs> And you hear a, Mariah, you hear a bottle fall between these little 
um, oops, I might be pinging the wrong way, uh, between this shelf here, and you can see a little bit of a, just the tip of an ear going, meow, kind of leaning a head out and then back in. Looks scared of you. I, um, Doll pulls crouch out. down. I'm oh, sorry. Doll pulls out its bow and arrow. Doll, if you shoot that cat, I swear I will smoosh you. Mm. I can see Doll right now, by the way, because I still have see invisibility up. So. So, Doll side eyes, the hideous sort of anglerfish like head sort of looks at you. I crouch, <laughs> I crouch down and ca- do one of those like little like you know thingy thingies where I go like here kitty 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 pretending to have a treat when you don't actually <laughs> um are you still in the stairway or are you so moving weird. towards it then so the... I, I kind of I'm I yeah I'm where doll is right now so okay um it doesn't seem to be coming forward uh, make an animal handling check oh boy. Um, trying to handle animals yeah, I am. It says it right there. It be is. true. <laughs> cat is animal. You could be like, you could be like that guy in that video. Oh, it's this is a whatever you can tell by the way it is. This tree, and you know he's throwing the dirt around, just trying to rustle up some <laughs> some critters, just throwing some. <laughs> I I can't even quote it, but you know what I'm talking about, right? It was the best quote ever. Yeah. <laughs> It's I like I was watching the video. <laughs> no, ah, right? shoot. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, I just anyway. Um, it does not come closer to you at the moment, and you see a, a bottle just a little further away <laughs> crash to the ground. It was such a waste of mine, doll. You release the tension on that boat right now. I'm going to staying like not fully crouched down, but I'm just going to stay a little low, not taking my full height. Um, creep forward a little bit. Okay. Yeah, kitty, kitty, kitty. Yeah, kitty, kitty, kitty. Is Doll coming too? Oh yes. Okay. Doll is standing by. Doll, Doll is holding an action to shoot the cat at the first sign of <sighs> any trouble. And his Doll's doll, a um, sprite. Cats are mortal enemies. Are, is um, Doll sort of still orbiting around Mariah's head? Yeah. All right, then. Uh, does my spell um, look see this? Because it's still yes. down there? Okay. Uh, there's a door in the far corner here too. And Mariah, as you're doing this, you some suddenly um, see a, you hear a, just a little bit of meow, sniffing and kind of like positive meowing. And then leaning its head around the corner, you see yellow eyes and sort of these pointed ears and whiskers and a grin of fierce needle like teeth in its mouth <laughs> doll fires <laughs> and doll, where's, it's your cousin where's prion now eh? i know what? doll was being ready but it's uh, we will still what? hop into initiative here as mariah yeah <laughs> they seem to be looking around with eyes and not really sure what to do but they certainly know that they are attacking your face. It seems like suddenly... um, That sounds to me like it knows exactly what it's going to do. (laughs) Well, they're not looking directly at her, but then they they do launch directly sort of at your face. Not my face. Moving from their little cellar point. Mm. And uh, launching itself at at dolls when it's launching it. I say, would you like me to get involved now, Mariah? All right, let's do this. <laughs> that was quite a bram. Jesus Christ, that's loud. It's bram. Sorry. I have the volumes all messed around. Sorry. 
I rolled my initiative with my Kraken dice. Extremely and, uh, scary, an Bram. The thirteen uh, <laughs> roll twenty, so it adds it to the tracker. Should I just roll and then change my initiative? Is that the fastest thing to do? That is totally fine. <laughs> Okie doke. Um, Peter, can we get a blank token on the map for the spellbook? Yep. Since I can cast from its location. I have... My master music volume level is all the way down. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> Same that here. Is yeah. Super loud. Sorry, I don't know why that would be. I can't even hear it. <laughs> so, um, there you go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <brah. laughs> Cat. <laughs> um, it looks Plus like. Uh, <laughs> Jellicle sucks, What if you started playing Cats the Musical? You know what? I know that musical so fucking well, I literally could do it. <laughs> My God, I used to want to be the white cat so bad. Oh. Yeah, the dance solo. Mariah, your stock has gone down just a little bit. <laughs> uh, That's okay. Avenues are very baby. Love that song. Um, sorry, Melvin. I'm just looking for something to throw on there, quick. Um, yeah, no worries. Should, you don't have a book token ready? I don't. I do not. I wish I did. Um, here, you'll be a book. Will be a little treasure hoard. I don't know. There we go. <laughs> Wait. Um, and I will give you control of said book. All the gold. <laughs> and Eris is going to be so jealous. <laughs> um, there you go. Melvin, you should have book to control now. Drag it on whenever you want. All right, so do we have everyone in initiative? I think I'm missing uh, one. Gadrazel has, an, has his own. Well, no, Gadrazel goes after me goes after you, I believe. Yeah. And then who else? I've got Saraya and I've got Nether, Mariah, Brian, um, and ours. And Aris! Did you roll initiative? It did not show up mm. here. It's in the little uh, That's fine. D&D What's the, what, what is That's fine. What did you roll? Eight. Technically, Glorious eight. Huh? Technically, God. DM, um, my familiar should go on its own initiative. We haven't been playing it that way. It's up to you. Uh, it can take its turn with you, unless just to not, unless we start abusing things. But exactly. that's kind of the typical okay. way. That's, that's fine. Just be trustworthy, and that's fine. Cool, uh, Sarayan. So you're at the top of the stairs here. I imagine everyone's kind of near the top of the stairs. Excuse me for. Mm -hmm moving anyone here, but do you hear, uh, I don't know, what is Mar what is Mariah's reaction when these fanged cats? Brim. I I literally, no, I, I, I said what I said when I saw the picture, which was, doll, it's your cousin! It's um, during, during this time, I would have been narrating what my yeah. awakened spellbook is uh, telepathically communicating to me, so... As soon as doll... Yeah, as soon as Dahl sees what this is, I assume Dahl knows. Um, would it be well known? I don't know. Hey, what's I mean, the uh, check to know? <laughs> we would have to, um... I don't know that it matters. As soon as Dahl sees what this is, Dahl fires and, and immediately tries to leave. So that's... That is okay, but that would be during your turn. Um, okay. Held enough. actions out of combat. Um, it's... Uh, Doll would have to have the dexterity in order to fire in time, sort of the you know, sort of thing. So, we'll which go. brings me to my question: Is it better than in this combat for Doll to have their own initiative? Um, in this case, sure, since okay. Doll was a bit more separated from Nether. Well, while you're getting that set up, um, Melvin is um, explaining what he's seeing, and then. Um, <laughs> We'll, we'll say, oh, oh, I think they found the cats. Oh, no, I think they found the cats, and they're not happy. Um, we might yep. need to get down there. So, yeah, that's what's... Uh... 
Oh dear. <laughs> I'm gonna have to buff these enemies. All right. Um, <laughs> Sarayan, it is your turn first of all as you hear something <laughs> happening in the basement there. Is it so. music? Is it Jellical songs with Jellical cats? <laughs> There's probably Decidedly an not. O okay. There's probably an oh fuck or other ah. expletive coming from me. Music that Sarayan has heard before. <laughs> so yes. and, and um, you just heard Melvin say that the cats are angry. The cats are angry. So Sarayan oh. is Oh no! <laughs> so <clears throat> um, Mariah fell down my... the well. <laughs> Mariah's <laughs> gone down the well. I didn't fall down <laughs> shit. <laughs> uh, I don't betray shit. I didn't see shit, and I don't fall down shit. Let's do so I'm something. I'm gonna take my action. <laughs> okay, Sean. So here's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna take my action, um, which is what you do first, and I'm gonna move for thirty feet down to the boss man. Um. Sure, movement, action, it's all the same, right? And so you could, <laughs> I will just say, well, you can How far get can I get past yeah. Prion to here with your full movement. Oh, great. Okay. So uh, let's see. So now that I am down witnessing Cats the Musical, I, hmm, I don't have any more movement. So what I will do instead is I will throw a javelin. I'm going to lob a javelin at one of these. I will okay. lob javelin at this one. The closest one? Mm-hmm. Okay. And I can just roll that on Beyond Fuente. Make it easier. <laughs> LOL. You fucking stabbed me. <laughs> What'd you roll, Serene? <laughs> I uh, had a crit fail. Uh, uh, but oh. a plus six to my modifier. <laughs> as my modifier so seven but it doesn't matter because it was a one so yeah. um i would say that i probably miss uh yeah and unfortunately you have multi-attack yeah. though you can do something i else. do have multi-attack so <laughs> the rain is uh gonna say barnacles and pull out another <laughs> javelin how many do i have just the one could I say I have two? I don't know. What's in your inventory? Ah, beans. You know, I've actually never used my javelin ever since I got a uh, wave. Because, you know, who needs it? It just says javelin singular. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and guess well, I just did, have did one. Well, did she drop it? Like, no, I have five. Happened? I have five. What happened when... Oh, okay. Um, I roll other one. Or throw other javelin. 24. 24 is better. And it, okay. uh, it, you hear, you see it uh, pierce kind of through the leg of one of these creatures and <laughs> turns at you and hisses. Sarayan hisses back. Um, wow. And <laughs> Sarayan speaks cat? <laughs> it's just wow. a visceral reaction. Um, and then do I still have a bonus action? I do, right? Uh, yes, if you have one to use. Mm -hmm. Okay, I do. Um, so I will then cast, um, Bebobop, Shield of Faith, and give Mariah plus two to their AC. Oh, bless you. <laughs> okay. No, As bless you. As you do that, you see the head twitch of the one that you just hit. Um, I will allow you to do this. Please roll a d6, Saran. Ooh, goody. Time to use more of my Kraken dice. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Kraken dice. A, a two? In case you're okay. wondering, this stream is sponsored by Kraken dice. Indeed. <laughs> so as you cast your spell, you feel like the, the hand that you used to draw the spell, you feel it almost drawn to this creature, and it turns and its eyes glow bright, and it kind of shudders a bit and suddenly then the eyes flash out and everyone within 30 uh, feet of it needs to make a constitution saving throw. So that's going to ah. be pretty much everyone, I think. Plus two, Upstairs. if you're in my aura. Constitution, you say? Yeah, please roll a constitution saving throw, friends. Even if we can't see them? Advantage. Can't see the light? 
Um, indeed. Twelve for me. So, so literally everybody. Okay. Yeah, right. I rolled okay. a nine. Okay. Um, everyone below fourteen takes three points of force damage. Okay. Ow. I mean, you that include damage. summons and familiars and such. Yeah, yeah. Well, what happens? If, what happens if you saved? Nothing. Whew. Okay. And. Uh, it, uh, and then, um, let's see. I gotta check one more thing. Can't say. Uh, Prion? Yes, sir. Please make a extra wisdom saving throw. Wisdom, you'll say. Plus four wisdom, to that. Wisdom, I say. I rolled a 19, so 23. All right. All right. <coughs> cool. Good to know. So, three damage to failures. Otherwise, nothing. That is the creature's reaction. And it is their turn. Um, hmm... Where is Gadrasel still at the top of the stairs? Yes. Okay. Um, and they don't really know where Dahl is, but they are looking around hungrily and decide that Mariah and um, uh, Serayan are going to be good enough. So uh, oh. we'll launch forward and do some attacky tacks. <laughs> what? Well, um, sorry, Peter. Can I? Is this? Um, is this? Like, it's a it's a solid wall. Yeah, you have to wall. go down okay. around the corner, um, and let's see, Mariah. I have three bites. It wants to eat your magic. Um, I have a twelve, a seventeen, and a twenty-four natural twenty. So, well, uh, the seventeen and the uh, natural twenty hit. Okay. Ooh. Um. Actually, hold on. Uh, against that 17, let's see here. Okay, you know, uh, yeah, against the, um... Oh, no, wait. Can I... Can I use a cutting words on one of those? Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, then on that second attack, I'll, after it tries to come at me once, I'll be like, ah, you need a dentist. <laughs> okay. 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 Got him. <laughs> um, got him. Uh, wait, is, it's, it's a D8, right? I, I don't, I, it's been so long since I've played this character. How yeah. do I do things? Great question. Uh, except this meets beats, so it's a, uh, mood point, so... Okay, so you take six points from the first one, and the crit is going to be even with shield of faith. Four piercing, two force. Sh sh shield of faith, you've got on you. Yeah, didn't you shield of faith? Here, so you get plus two to your AC. My AC okay. is shit, guys. <laughs> bard AC is tough. I have a yeah. bard who's like level eleven, and everyone's tanking around, and I'm like, my AC is still thirteen. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it never Fantastic. goes up. So um, it's it's six on the first hit, you said? Yes. Okay. Uh, four piercing, two force. The second one is okay. going to be... Um, I need to roll. Ooh, terrible. Uh, uh, so 14 points of damage total. <laughs> Don't forget your, uh, your, um, your advantage. Seven piercing, seven force. My advantage? What are you talking about? No, I was talking to the DM. He's got oh. uh, advantage for what? It, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't work. Are you for trying to kill me? Inspiration. <laughs> no. So those are those are two of the attacks. Uh, okay. One more. Well. Oh, the the other works. one missed. That's right. Uh, and then Sarayan, let's try to. <laughs> was it? Was that one right cat? That was. That was two. Three two cats. Three attacks over two cats. Three attacks over three cats, and the fourth cat is attacking Sarayan. Oh, I misunderstood. I thought with one a of fifteen them just to like hit, wailed on me. That's not hit. And the other one runs up and attacks. Um, eight. So that's not going to do it. All right. Weirdly, that is also turn. does not hit. 
Nether. All right. Um, <clears throat> Nether is going to step down. Um, just use her movement to get uh, right behind Prion. Excuse me, Prion. And she's going to put out her hand and send two Eldritch Blasts down to hit the Gramishka that is right in front of Serene. Okay, and it will kind of shudder and its eyes will glow. Um, please roll a d6. Even for a cantrip? Uh, yeah, it's still a spell. Right. I have rolled a two. Okay, um, same thing. I need wisdom saving throws from everyone within 30 feet of it. Does it wisdom blasts con. a bit of energy? Wisdom or last con? Last time it was It con. was con last time. Excuse me, it is constitution saving throws. Natural 20. Well done. 27. 20. 30. 11. <laughs> that is a... Uh, um, 10. 10, yes, so that is uh, uh, three points of force damage to those. Oh, I feel like I'm going to be failed. concussed by the end of this. Uh, doll explodes. Ah, oh, gross. It just disappears. It's not gross. <laughs> teeth, little teeth flying everywhere. Yeah. Ow! Saran takes eyeball. more damage. <laughs> and then you may... Um, Let's see, who else? Uh, Gadrazel, just a second. Uh, can I save? Well, Gadrazel saved because he's a badass. Well, yeah. Badass beaver. Uh, now uh, that that has badass happened, uh, did the spell get off before I was blinded or um, was, was yeah, I simultaneous? Was simultaneous. So this attack will be at. Not a disadvantage, but a subsequent Correct. attacks will be. Okay. So two blasts come shooting down. One of them hits AC 13, and the other one hits AC 9. Nine will miss. 13 will hit. All right. Uh, don't know why I rolled 2d10 there. We'll go with the first one. No, well, no. Only one showed up, so... Five. Yeah, five points five. of force damage. Yep, okay, cool. It blasts into it. It, it kind of goes back, and then it, it kind of looks around above it. You think it's looking for that, um, for doll almost, and it, you can kind of see it look almost disappointed and then turn its attention well, it's back all to right. all of you. Running down uh, the um, the uh, stairs is Gadrazel. I think, let me just see here. And then you see their eyes light up again and their noses <laughs> going, and the, all of them hungrily turn their gaze towards the giant beaver. Ah, uh, right. Um, noises just, are my these are thing. tiny, by the way. Um, I kind of okay. messed up their tokens a little bit, so you could, um, yeah. So it runs its 30 feet, which I think because of moving through allies and such gets it to here. It is then going to use its bonus action to face step to here. Um, and then it is going to attack with advantage. Does face step count as misty step or is it just a separate thing? The fey magically teleports up to 30 feet to an unoccupied right. space it can see. Nope. Doesn't sound Not like a spell. it's casting a spell. Right. Yep. Um, <clears throat> and attacks with his claws. Uh, I still have to roll to hit, though. Sorry. Spell attack, right? Yeah, spell attack. Hitting AC 21. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, so that is <laughs> six points of slashing damage and five points of force damage. Ooh, and this one explodes. Ah. Gross. Ah! Gadrizza looks around, his eyes bulging, his beaver teeth extremely large and imposing, and he looks at these creatures. Wants to take yeah. revenge for 
having lost Dahl. All right, Mariah, you're up. What's that? You are a delightfully scary creature, Beaver. Stalwart um, little fighter. I have a question, DM. How uh -huh. much space is there between the top of these wine racks and the ceiling? Um, they uh, probably only like a, f a foot or a foot and a half. They're built. It's a yeah. cellar. It's low ceiling. So okay. I was hoping I could get on top of one, but so it goes. Um, you could squeeze up there. Um, okay, they do not like magic, so I... I will magically escape and then mundanely take my revenge. Okay. So, I will, uh, poof. Okay. To back... <clears throat> the two of them next to you don't like it. Move down to the end of the hall. Could you roll two d six, two d sixes, please? Yeah, I can do that. Just to save me. Double sixes. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> two of them in front of you as you cast the spell. You see their eyes grow really large, um, and as they're getting this energy, it looks like they're in pain, and suddenly. It they explode and actually then the entire cat explodes and then you see the limbs just writhing on the floor start to regrow parts of cat and suddenly two of these turn into swarms wow <clears throat> that was so gross I... in my mind ah <laughs> uh, <laughs> throws up <laughs> 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 um, I you know it's bad stairs. if the beaver barfs <laughs> and say Melvin get your twinky little ass down here <laughs> and then I'm gonna shoot one of the remaining cats with my crossbow Melvin, <laughs> we need your smallness <laughs> 13 13 hits this cat yeah. That's like the worst thing you could possibly say <laughs> to anybody. Five <laughs> points of piercing damage against the remaining not swarm cat on the right. Okay, done. Sorry, I'm trying to make it better and make it worse. We need your smallness. Sorry. Um, petite. Petite. Um, petite. You know what? That that space above the shelf. Can I use my movement to climb up on top of the shelf? <laughs> yeah, you'll be prone up there, but yes. That's fine. I will climb up there. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, we're Don't gonna be up to uh, Inaris. Doll Yay. bangs on the wall of the border fay. Can I see these nasty cat thingies? From where I'm standing, nope. Oh, uh, you'll have to stairs. move down the stairs. Um, I mean, I just want to get with where within visual range. I just want to be able to see them. The start of the combat was a little weird. You guys probably would have been closer to the stairs, so you can get to. Oops, sorry. You can get down to the edge of the stairs here and peer around the corner and see a giant swarm. Awesome. So if I was there at the start of combat, I technically haven't moved yet, right? No, no, no. That's this is you can move to get to here. That's what I'm saying. Fine. I still want to shoot one of the cats. You can shoot a cat. Yes, I'm gonna shoot a cat. Not in real life, guys. We do they not, are not condone cats, the shooting the way. of cats. If they you haven't permitted. seen these already, if you didn't see the thing that was displayed, <sighs> these are definitely not cats. <laughs> we, uh, no, we, it's all real life. Everything that happens in the game happens in real life. It's, it's true. We don't play, oh, we don't play around here. No! If you die in the game, you die in real life. That's right. <laughs> it's hardcore. I came back. But anything for died. entertainment, right, guys? <laughs> Amen. All right. Does a 23 hit? He, oh, yeah, absolutely. Right Which one are you attacking? Uh, this one. I don't know if it's pinging, but across from the beaver. Okay, you... 
Let's see. That's on the other side of a wall for me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beaver adjacent. Yes. Go ahead and roll the damage. Okay, it's six and then... I don't know why that's not popping up. If I get sneak attack, it's 11 points. 11 points? Okay. Done. Yes. All right, and anything else? That is it. Chilling Melvin. Um, this is sort of a um, mechanics question. If I deal damage to something but not have it be fire damage, will it still explode if, I, if that thing is alcohol? <laughs> I mean, fire damage would ignite a flammable thing. Yes. So, but if it's not fire damage, is it still going to like, like if I change the damage type of fireball to radiant, for example, am I still going to blow up all the alcohol? Uh, you better not. <laughs> no. You want to drink the alcohol from the haunted house? <laughs> Good yes. Question. Um, okay, I will Drink center the, a the alcohol at the other weird house. I will center a radiant fireball. Um, You're drinking people on the wall behind these barrels over here. Yeah, which I think should just barely miss both Sarayan and Mariah. Uh, sorry for the in advance for the beaver. He's going to get again. Yeah, really fiery beaver. You know, I it didn't occur to me when I chose a beaver that it was going to cause <laughs> all of this humor. What are you uh, talking apologies. about? Apologies. Yeah, yeah, okay, what am I talking about? What? 20 foot radius, yeah. Yeah, 20 foot radius. Damn, it's one hot beaver. That's a good roll. It's one... That's a really good roll. So I think um, I can catch the second swarm as well in that, maybe, without hitting Mariah. Nah, take me down, man. It looks like you either get Mariah or Saran in order to include the... Get the second swarm. I'm very strong. It's fine. It's fine. Go okay, for it. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> this one? Gadrazel uh, is destroyed. Sure. You don't know where I am. It's fine. That's a big floating beaver. Thing. Yes. Okay. Are you sure about that, Mariah? Yeah. Was this was this third level? That is third level. Okay. Boom. All right. So That'll the be, last uh, one will use thirty-five radiant its... damage. Last one will use its reaction. Please roll a d6. Against me or Mariah? Uh, Against Mariah. She needs to make a dex save. I'm going down anyway, so. That's a three. Uh, three. Oh, Weird. Well, this one you can see draw in some magical energy and um, then does not draw in nearly enough and then just explodes anyway. And so dies. how much damage is that for half? Uh, I can do math. Uh, it'd be 17. 17? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Saran, you see Mariah tumble off the top of the uh, shelf and uh, land limply on the floor. If I saw that, I would try to move to catch her. Can I try to do that as a reaction? I am way the fuck far away from you, dude. I will. Can I take a dash? No, I'm just kidding. I can't. Do that. Sorry, <laughs> bye. Dash <laughs> But take a dash for um, reaction. And, uh... If you're falling and going to take damage, I will cast Featherfall as a reaction. I was like, I don't have Featherfall, so. Oh, I mean, I was just, I was falling for flavor, not for. I mean, How do you see I... her? I can see through the. Through the, the manifest mind telepathically transmits what it sees to me. Can I fall so for flavor you can... and not for damage? Yes, you can flavor <laughs> okay. fall. Okay. Certainly. Good. <laughs> Flavorfall. It's the lesser <laughs> known flavorful. aspect of Featherfall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything <clears throat> else? When uh, your Melvin? soup is too bland. 
<laughs> I can't I'm gonna take a flavor call. <laughs> I'm gonna start making my way down the stairs. Making my way downtown. <laughs> yep. Okay. Oh, come on, don't even start that. That's a meme <laughs> from another game. No, don't move there. Um. <laughs> All right. Prion. Sorry, I, sir. I can't do anything. I'll stay there. No, I I, I move behind. Oh, you Prion. move behind. Oh, Not okay. in front of Thank you. God for that. Okay. that seems I like move. a bad idea. It's 30 foot. Takes me to there. And I will attack. What are you attacking with? A gla uh, my trident. All right. As you pull out the trident, you feel this, and make your attack. Your attack is at disadvantage, right. and you feel the axe call to you. Oh, it's a grumpy axe. Okay, <laughs> um, I will hit the swarm. I will hit this swarm here. Okay, at disadvantage. You say, yeah. Yeah. Plus six. Oh God, that's an eight for the first attack. Fortunately, misses. And the next one is a 14. 14 hits. Okay. D10. It's not too bad. Hold on a second. 7 plus 3. 10 damage. Okay. Swarm is looking a bit depleted, but it's still barely. It's just just a little bit alive. I'm going to action surge and do it again. Okay. Still at disadvantage. The axe yep. is just... 14. 14 hits. And a 13. Both hit. Didn't you action 13. surge against the... Um, did you action surge against the... Um, <laughs> the bone? Have we f A clot. A clot? You did. I yeah. did. Okay, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Good point. Thank you very much. <coughs> I need to tick that off thing because I can't remember what was different. Ah, you should have written notes. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> did I act? Uh, did I second wind? Yes, I okay. believe I remember you saying yep. that after the clod. It was big. Okay. Big thumpy. That's me done then. <coughs> Great. It's Ryan. It's back to you. Okay, so I am going to use Wave to attack the Grimishka in front of me. Okay. Grimishka, Grimishka, we touch the Grimishka. Oh, uh, 12. 12 barely hits. <laughs> 12 but hits. it hits! Oh my gosh, so that's going to be uh, nine piercing damage to that Grimishka. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to take my extra attack to hit it again. Why won't you it. die? 27. 27 <laughs> is a big roll. Yep. 14 points of damage. That will slay this one as it just pops. I lob its head off. You oh. do. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely lop. <clears throat> and then it just kind of starts to instantly decay into the floor with little magical sparks around it. Oh, it's like when you kill a bad guy in any of the Zelda games. Yeah. Anything nope. else for you? Yeah. So now that I'm no longer engaged with that dumb, dumb bubblegum, I'm going to move take some of my movement and get up in the face of these two baddies. Okay. Well, they, they are swarms. swarms. And on their yeah. turn, one's going to move into this space, and one's going to move into this space. Um, I could take attack of opportunity then if they move. If they not, it's if they move into your threat range. This is so confusing. Why would you have polar master then? Well, because There's if you were to step distance. back to here or something, once it started to move, you could attack it. You have to step mm -hmm. out of your threat range. It's only when they come into it. It's like you're holding a spear out. That, that's the idea. Is, and then they run into it. It's not just any time they move next to you, you attack. Um, it's kind of like holding the line. Um, <clears throat> and the, it's 
kind of that step back mechanic. So there's magical things around here, and I'm so mad I about also it. can't take an opportunity attack. Nope, it has not moved out of your threat range. Beans. Swarm of Grimishka is attacking Inaris. I take an attack of opportunity then. Okay, yeah, that for that go for it. I have a 15 versus Inaris. I rolled a double 10, so that's 16. And uh, that is max damage, yep. 13. Cool. <coughs> Inaris does 15 hit you. All right, take. Uh, is this? Okay. My swarm was depleted, so it was not the damage I thought it was. Um, uh, sorry, 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 mathing. Um, bite. Bite, bite, bite. Uh, uh, 14 points of damage total. And then Prion, as it does that, Prion... Uh, swings around his glaive and cuts through a couple of them and simultaneously as it lands its attack, this one is slain by Prion's reaction. And then the next one, the other swarm will attack Prion. 21. Yep. Uh, 16 points of piercing and... Uh, nine points of force. <laughs> okay. Nether. Nether feels and hears the explosion from Melvin's spell. She turns to him without looking and grabs his arm. What you do? What you do? And she is going to take the dash action. 5, 10, 15, 20, 15, 20, 25, 30. Um, that's going to move her past the swarm. I don't know if it incurs an attack of opportunity. Um, do, 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 do. They're not going to take it. All right, and she rushes. Actually, she, um, she can't see. Uh... Would you determine whether or not I could find Mariah's unconscious form DM? Do I have an action That's to tough. take dash? Did Mariah fall dead when um, Dahl was still alive? I don't think so. No, nope. it was after. Gadrazel was up. Um, actually, simultaneously, Gadrazel and uh, Mariah went down at the same time, actually. Yeah, you would have to make a really good perception uh, a good perception check to be able to all right so uh five let's see yeah. five ten fifteen twenty twenty five thirty so i get to there <laughs> i'm gonna make a perception check to see if i can i call out mariah mariah uh disadvantage so 17 and five it's just too loud in here um you kind of know the general area where she was but it's yeah, you, th you think she's in the general area over here. That's all you know. So it could be in any of these corners. So Nether is reaching out and touching the bottles and the the uh, wine racks, looking around. Mariah, say something. Say something. Mariah. Hi. You can say a death save. I can, indeed. Uh, that's just a constitution roll, right? Uh, just a d20. Oh, so just, a, just a d20. Just a d20. Ooh. You bleed and take one step closer to the grave. Nice. Inaris. Who? Oh no! Oh no! Not take a step forward. I'm going to stand right where I'm at. And I'm going to whip out my short bow. It out. <coughs> and does the 12 hit? 12 just barely hits. Oh, haha, yes. Okay, so 16 damage. Ooh, it's a good damage. Nice. Yes. Swarm is at half health now. 
All right, I'm going to stay where I'm at for my... Yep, I'm good. Melvin, it's your turn again. Uh, having seen um, Mariah go down through the through the um, uh, manifested mind of my spellbook, I'm gonna uh, shout down to to Nether. Um, it's just straight down the the row that you're in right now, right at the end of it. Um, she it looks like she's bleeding out. Uh, shoot. Um, and then I will firebolt the swarm, I guess since I don't have okay. a way to heal Mariah. Um, that's a 10 to hit. Probably not. Um, it misses, and... Um, it's looking... Let's see who... Please roll the damage, Melvin. Okay as all of the eyes kind of light up and your firebolt just curves around this swarm and impacts into Serayan, dealing 13 points of fire damage to Serayan. Uh, Serayan gets pelted uh, with a bunch of flaming quills. You look and Serayan suddenly, Melvin has hit you with a fiery spell attack. And Prion, it is your turn. Uh, just quickly. Else, oh, I'm, I'm oh. sorry, Serene. Oh, God. <clears throat> uh, it's like just... when you hit the Zora princess in uh, Ocarina of Time, and she just sits down and starts kind of like, Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. That's what happened. <laughs> uh, it's the it's most like the giant useful fish. thing ever. <laughs> All right, a quick thank you to Pixie for 300 bits and to Manx Works for $12. That's 5d6 inspirations. A bunch of d6s, eh? Yeah. Okay. We Thanks, guys. That. Uh, Yeah, thank you all for the support. That is one. It's wonderful. So, Mariah, Sarayan, Melvin, Never and Peter. Yes, sounds good. Thank you very much. Right, um, for my go, I will just attack this horde twice. Horde. Uh, disadvantage. I don't know why it's not being disadvantage, but uh, it's 16. Definitely. For nine damage. Which one's disadvantage? Oh, the, uh, and, oh there we go. Dead okay. Or? And uh, with uh, not yes, nine damage. And this one, wow, well, that's good too. Slices through, and indeed, the last bit of that swarm, heavily damaged by Melvin's fireball, is departed, and all is quiet once again. There is no meowing left down in the basement. I by movement I will run towards Mariah. Okay. And Serayan? I too will run towards Mariah. Okay, you can get to her. Do you use any lay on hands or anything like that? What's I, your plan? You know, what's weird is I don't. I just stand over her lifeless form and stare. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely use some lay on hands. Um, I will give Who knows? Points. Maybe you're freaked out from having used it earlier. You know. Nah, nah. My uh, <laughs> my short-term memory isn't so good. So I'm just going to lay on some one, hands. One natural one away from death. Oh my goodness. All right, I'm going to lay on 10 points of healing. Thank you. Oh, mm -hmm. well done. You almost died. Oh my God, I almost died. I'm going to uh, come running down the stairs as well and 
Oh my oh my gosh, Mariah, I'm so sorry. I didn't see that you were on on top of the shelf uh, there. It's gonna hurt in the morning. And right now. <laughs> you also uh. hit me for what it's worth. I don't know how that happened. I was aiming at the swarm and it kind of bent my magic around it. <sighs> it was weird. These little not actually cat cats are I don't know. They've got some weird magic shit going on with them. Oh. It's all right, Melvin. Shit happens. I don't okay. yet forgive you, but I may in time. Do do either of you need a, a potion to make up for um, my mistake? I would take a potion. Saran extends okay. a webbed hand. I'll give you a regular potion of healing. That would be awesome. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We good? No more cats? No more cats. Oh, oh, they were cats. Awesome. They were cats, were they? Oh. <clears throat> They're Grimishkas. I don't know that. <laughs> Sorry, Mariah. I know you wanted a cat for this ship, but I don't know if these are going to be yeah. the right call. The first ship I was on had a really nice ship cat. I've always wanted one since then. But... So it goes. <sighs> Let's see if I didn't knock over all of these. <laughs> to, like, clamor back up to my feet and I start sort of like pawing through the shelves to see if there's any that are actually full of anything that's liquid. Um, There are a couple bottles that look to be. Um, There's some liquid in them. One of them you dust kind of off the front and it says purple grape mash number three. A couple of those. <laughs> um, Poetry. And, yeah. And then there's one that says, uh, two of them that say Ludendorff arsenic wine. Exciting. I will take all of them and put no them in No red dragon pack. crush? No red dragon crush? No, not this time. Damn. That's uh, I've, I've, I've heard that vintage took some time to... Uh, Replenish. Wait, so it's purple, purple crush, purple, purple grape, grape mash number three. Yeah. A good one. And uh, what was the other one? Arsenic something. Ludendorff arcs arsenic wine. Awesome. Yeah. Don't want to drink that then. Straight into my uh, <clears throat> bag of holding. <clears throat> Um, and, uh, as you guys are kind of looking around, there's an apron hung in the corner and it's exceptionally long. It looks like it would fit someone about, um, nine feet tall or so. Not nine feet tall. But, um, nine feet. What? That's exceptionally tall. Yeah. It's, uh, not nine feet, uh, but about eight Fewer feet. Fewer than nine not, feet. It's very, very tall. Uh, okay. and it's strange, and the, even the things that the the sash that would tie around the waist to cinch it are sort of short. It looks like it would act be just an absolute beanpole of a person that this would fit. Um, as you're kind of looking at it, there's a key in the oh. um in the pocket, just a simple um iron or brass key. This might be useful. Hey, Prion, there's a door over there. Should we rest first before we carry on? Uh, yeah. That that could be helpful. I could I could use a minute. Do we need like a little like Pick me up rest, or do we need to actually like find somewhere to bed down for the night? Pick me up rest will be fine for me. Yeah, pick me up, it's fine. Do you have any music you can play while while we rest? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can I can take care of that. Um, maybe not here. Can we go somewhere with a couch? Was that room upstairs that had a couch? I mean, they yeah. were kind of moldy and gross, but I guess we could. A couch is a couch. Yeah, we go upstairs to the couch room then. All right. Upstairs to the couch room. And as we're leaving the basement. Yeah. yeah. 
Nether catches hold of Melvin's clothes. Sort of staring in a direction other than he, where he is, just holding on to him. Your magic's getting very powerful. Mighty dangerous. Tell me. Have you ever slit a man's throat while he was sleeping? N no, I haven't done that before. I don't even carry a bladed weapon other than my pen knife. Quill knife. I wouldn't stop at anything to keep Mariah safe. Think about that the next time you cast a spell like that. Okay. He turns to a much earlier page in his notebook and starts to scribble furiously. <laughs> <laughs> Update on a nether slash debris page. Okay. I imagine there's like that uh, um, nether greatly disapproves come up in the corner of your... <laughs> of your the nether will your, remember uh, this. Your, your, uh, yeah. your reputation with nether is reduced by minus five. Yeah. <laughs> it's a hostile. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Moving up, um, you swear as you start to go down the stairs, whoever's last up can hear shuffling of glass behind you. I don't know whoever that wants to be who's bringing up the rear of the. Probably I Melody, because af after, after she. Probably that, me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Melvin. Nether goes so, up and sort of feels her way around <laughs> until she finds Mariah and then sort of puts her hand on her shoulder and squeezes it. And then. Melvin, you see an exceptionally tall, exceptionally tall broom for a moment brushing some broken glass to the middle of the room. And as you look back, it just kind of leans against the the shelf and then you see you hear another sound you just hear a whoosh, as the apron that you were seeing before just falls lifelessly to the ground nearby um, and then it's still as a right before i go up the stairs i'd like to lean over toward the um nearest shelf that had a broken bottle on it mm -hmm. um and i'd like to uh cast press to digitation to uh, clean well, up the six, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been hilarious. Uh, just to clean up the spill. I the was spill helping! <laughs> um, okay. Very good. <clears throat> what kind of a rest are we taking here? Short rest. A short, but Melvin, can you look at this axe so, for me? Uh, Nether will recast... Um, Fine, familiar. Just yes, make your way all the way up to that uh, nice little cozy room with the slightly broken yeah. furniture. Did, did you did you immediately address me because I'm short, or was that just coincidental? I, sorry, what? Re regarding the length of our rest, I n never mind. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, I can take a look at the the axe for you. Um, and I, I'll ritually cast Identify during this short rest. Okay. I had a song of rest during this short rest, uh, such that everyone can. Ba -ba -da 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 -da. If you're rolling a uh, hit dice, add an extra d6. For, for each hit Arm. dice or? No, just total. Oh, just for total, yeah. Armor of Agathis is done. <clears throat> <clears throat> so you guys begin you play your song it seems all right um 20. the yeah you're able to short rest melvin as you cast identify this is you focus on this blade and feel a bit of power and it's got a very aggressive feeling 
just to the magic itself and it feels very connected to that spirit that you guys talked to before but i mean it's a plus one uh, battle axe that gives you um one extra hit point per character level to your max that is what you learn from the identify spell Uh, it, it seems to just be a magically enchanted axe. Um, should be able to hit things better and kill them a little easier. Aye. But I'm getting worse with my actual trident. That's what's con huh. concerning. I feel lackluster to use it. Maybe it's haunted. I'm like sprawled across this chair with my violin, like plucking away at it. Very, you know nonchalantly lounging the spirit told you about the axe Aye. maybe it just really wants you to use it and it gets jealous like wave <clears throat> wave doesn't get jealous wave just wants me to be the best that i can be have you ever tried using a weapon other than wave um today i threw a javelin i threw two javelins Okay, so I'm not saying it's exactly like Wave, but what I am saying is that clearly Wave demonstrates that sometimes weapons can be weird and finicky. Why don't you ask Wave if he can speak to this axe? <clears throat> okay. Oh, she's actually doing it. Hey, Wave? You hear... You get the feeling of attention. You hear a, not, a, a uh, sigh. Doesn't respond. <sighs> kind of Nothing. like a sigh. Yeah. There's been a change in the force. Uh, wave. Um, we've got this this battle axe. It seems like maybe you might have. It's it's magical, just like you. Um, maybe it's you, you can talk to cousin. it. You commune with other in. I mean, very special sentient weapons just because it's a magic weapon means it automatically knows all other magic weapons right yeah <laughs> uh. <laughs> um wave you just hear that you feel the sentience and you hear a bit of humming in the background um mm -hmm. Sarayan, this is a waste of time. It's like I feel like I'm about to get roasted. <laughs> and I am only encouraged by the fact that the hesitance with which you asked makes me think that you realize that this is a waste of time, which means you are getting a little bit better at least. It, my friends wanted me to ask and I just wanted to do them that favor. Won't happen again. You're better than your friends, Saray, and remember that, and use it on them. <laughs> they should follow Don't your worry. example, and you should make them. Uh, Wave says that he doesn't know this axe. Don't worry about what he said. <laughs> That's not suspicious at all, Saray. <laughs> Thank you. Does Saray still eyes, talk out loud? All yeah, the time fully. that she's talking to her weight. <laughs> okay. She kind of that like person looks that talks louder the on the phone distance. than actually yeah, to yeah. people next to them. Yeah. yeah. It's like all of us, like our heads begin to tilt, you know, as she's speaking to the point now that we're all like literally like just like almost <laughs> supine. Mariah is. <laughs> Leg up over you, the chair. Please. As this short rest up. completes mariah almost strangely at the end of one of your notes you hear a percussive sound coming from the next room the one with the statue and then yeah. another one and then another one like the tumbling of heavy objects and assuming someone peeks around the corner all of the um gaunt uh um what are they called? I'm losing busts. it. Busts. Busts. Thank busts. you. 
are looking even skinnier where you can see all of their cheek structure and their jaw bones. Their lips are almost non-existent now. Their eyes sunken back into their heads are sitting there. And piled across the front is the stone that had blocked up the tower previously. It seems to have now collapsed oh. over some time. Well then, that looks fun and interesting. And at the same time, you hear a um, knocking coming from this Your door here door. in the center room. Just knocking on the low, <laughs> yeah, knocking on the chamber door. <laughs> low, it just <laughs> it crashes up against the door and drops to the floor. Doom, doom, doom. Repeatedly. I'll go Boom. have a look. If it goes you on open long it, Prion, and shooting out into the Ooh. hallway is Kelly the Fire. planchette. Oh, Jesus. That tumbles at your feet and then <laughs> zips up onto the spirit board before circling around a few letters randomly and then coming still. The spirits are restless and wanting to communicate to you again as this house continues to wake up to your mm -hmm. presence inside. Um, and I think that is where we will leave it for tonight, my dear friends. So.